All right. We are here. We are live. Hello, friends. And welcome to a very special Mayday One-Shot where we will be playing the award-winning indie horror RPG, Ten Candles. Uh, my name is Sergio, and I will be your GM. Uh, with me are two lovely Mayday members and a very special guest. Uh, would you all mind introducing yourselves, please? Hey, I'm Leg. I don't know who I'm playing today, but I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Adrian, also Miradonk, and I am also excited to be here. And I am Eli, uh, and I don't know who I'm playing, but I am also excited to be here. <laughs> Uh, our friend uh, Ankh was, uh, happened to be in town, and we said, you know what, we need an extra hand for this game, and here they are, and we're so happy to have them. Uh... So, we have been wanting to try this game out for a while, uh, so I'm very excited to be running it. Ten Candles is a tabletop role-playing game that focuses around shared narrative control. So rather than one player or the GM having complete control of the story, everyone at the table will share the mantle of storyteller and contribute to the narrative. The rules are simple and we will cover most of the stuff you need to know to follow along during character creation. I would like to state that 10 Candles is a horror game, so viewer discretion is advised. I'd give a more detailed content warning, but I have no idea what these goobers are going to come up with. So if at any point anyone watching feels overwhelmed or uncomfortable, feel free to walk away and take a break. So, with the housekeeping out of the way, let's begin. Ten days ago, something or someone blotted out the sky. Now, no stars can be seen. All communication with satellites has been lost, and the sun no longer lights up the sky. Five days after this anomaly occurred, they came. No one knows exactly who or what they are, but two very important things are clear. They fear the light, and they're coming for you. This is a story about survivors trying to light up their little corner of the world and do something meaningful within it with the few hours they have left. This is a story about desperation. It is a story about people like you and I fighting back against the darkness only to inevitably and escapably can be consumed by it. These things are true. The world is dark. And we are, we alive. are still alive. Is it still alive or just alive? Both work. Great. <laughs> Either way, welcome everyone to Mayday Plays 10 Candles. Don't you love so me? we are going to begin the game creating some characters now what you normally need to play 10 candles is 10 tea light candles which are represented on our layout here um something to light them well we've lit them already a pack of index cards some black markers uh 10 six-sided dice of one color a handful of six-sided dice one per player of a different color uh a fireproof bowl we will uh, not be lighting anything on fire for safety reasons, so it'll be a metaphorical fire, and our voice recorder, so your phones will do. But the first thing we need to do is to create our characters. There are three elements to a character in Ten Candles. There is the traits, the moment, and a brink. The first thing we're going to do is create your character's traits. So, players, what I'm going to ask you to do is you are going to create one word traits that describe adjectives that define who a character is. Every character has two kinds of traits. One is a virtue and one is a vice. Obviously a virtue would be a mostly positive trait and a vice would be a mostly negative trait. An example of a virtue might be lucky or handsome or strong. 
the more kind of open-ended you can make these, the better for the role-playing, because there's more room to play with these. So I would like the three of you to come up with one virtue and one vice for these characters. An example of a vice could be afraid, controlling, compulsive, claustrophobic. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, and once you have these virtues and vices, uh, let me know, and we will do something in particular with these. I'm going to check chat real quick just to make sure we're keeping up. Glad to see OK is DM and Ladybug in the chat. Yeah, we should be using Allegra's Corn Cauldron for this, but unfortunately, it's probably not fireproof. <laughs> Sorry, gang. Yeah. I got to do some research before we use Cauldron. <laughs> It's a it's cold proof. <laughs> Damn right uh, to, it answer, is. to answer your question, uh, DM, this is live. We're we're live right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do we feel like we have our vices and virtues? Almost one additional second, please. No, no worries, no rush. What, do we need to put them on? Yes. Yeah. Write write them down on pieces of paper, separate pieces of paper, if you can. If you got to tear a piece of paper, that's fine. No big deal. Sure. 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 Okay. Just... Oh, I thought I tore those. My bad. <laughs> now, I'll, I'll explain the, the reason these traits exist, not just to define your character, but traits can be burned in order to re-roll all the dice which came up in one in a conflict. A conflict is basically any kind of roll where you guys are trying to do something that might be challenging or might kind of define the narrative going forward. So if you have a virtue <clears throat> that you feel... Um, is a good time to burn. You can burn it and it will allow you to reroll any ones. Uh, same thing with a vice and same thing with a, a moment. Uh, what we'll get oh into God. though is that uh, before we begin, you have to kind of set these in a certain order and you can't use them until you've burned the previous one. So we have our vices and virtues. All right. What I'd like to do before anybody says what their vices and virtues are is I want us to hand that vice and virtue to the player next to you. Now, obviously, we're not all together. Eli and Adrian, you may switch. And I think maybe, how can we do this? Maybe Eli, write to Allegra in Discord what those are. And Allegra, you send to Eli your virtues and vices. Cool. Right? Cool. So yeah, everyone should have a Seattle. different set. Yeah. Adrian will have Eli's. I'll have Adrian's. A Eli will have mine. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So once everyone has them, then we can actually announce what those traits are. So let me know when that's been done and we can continue. Wake up, Discord. Here we go. Can everyone in the chat hear our music? I want to make sure it's not too loud, but that it is audible. It's very subtle right now. Right on the back of these. Okay. Uh, whoever feels like they have their, maybe Adrian, if we can start with you, what vices and virtues were you given? Sure. My virtue is going to be lucky. Okay. Hesitant. Okay. The vice is hesitant. Yes. All right. Um, Allegra. Uh, my virtue is dedicated. My vice is absent-minded. Okay. You're dedicated but absent-minded. And then, Eli, what was your virtue and vice? My virtue is being strong-willed, uh, but my vice is easily distracted. Okay. <laughs> a lot of um, a lot of flighty-minded people in our, <laughs> in our group today. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Not, not, yeah, that's all right. So, um, we've read out the virtues and vices. Now it's time to, for me, to read what the module is about, and then we'll continue character creation. So we have decided to kind of combine two uh, uh, predefined, pre-made modules that are in the book, one of them being a drift, and one of them being um, with a bang. And it is as follows. You guys find yourselves aboard the USS Abraham Lincoln, which is a real nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. 
It's been silent for ten days. Silent save the occasional howl on the wind, and screams quickly silenced. The engine has gone quiet and you have been adrift in the darkness, the only survivors. Backup energy and emergency lights held out for some time, but now even they have begun to fade. The ship is being overtaken by night. A legion of them crowd the deck, and you intend to make this their grave. Only a few of you are left. Perhaps even more unsettling, however, is the fact that less than an hour ago, the ship's engine started to come back to life. The ship is moving but under whose control? You have barricaded yourselves in a cabin, but have collectively decided that wherever the, the uh, Abraham Lincoln is headed, it must not make it to its port. You must travel deeper into the bowels of the ship to reach the nuclear warhead stashed within. Once you've reached the center of the ship, you'll need to arm the bomb. There is no other way. You know from the start, this isn't a mission you'll walk away from, but it is one that they will remember forever. So, now that I have defined what our uh, uh, module is, we need to now come up with some concepts for our characters. I promise we will not be trading any more uh, cards, so I need you to come up with a name for your character, a look, uh, which is basically what do they look like at a quick glance, and a concept. In a few words, who are they? What are they? So a name, what do they look like at a quick glance? And in a few words, who are they? What are they? Their concept. I love the sound of that marker writing. The analog. <laughs> Today's game is a little bit of a mix of analog and digital. Okay. Once you feel you have a name, a look and a concept, let me know and I'll ask you to go ahead. So Allegra, why don't you give us the name, the look and the concept of your character? Uh, today I'm playing Cyrus, pronouns they, them. Uh, they are a scruffy, disheveled, kind of short person. Uh, with dark hair, and they are the ship's mechanic who's trying to live on just positive thoughts and chaos. Okay, trying to stay positive in this world. Um, Eli, do you feel you're ready? Um, I'm playing uh, Lieutenant Jules, the uh, uppity square looking uh, brunette woman. Um, and they're uh, one of the second in commands on this ship, um, and they're a very individual. Okay, so they are smart, they're resourceful, they've managed to live, and I would assume most everybody in the group probably defers to them as the, the yeah. leader. Yeah. Uh, Adrian, give us your character. I am playing Eustace Kelly. I am uh, an older gentleman in my mid 40s to 50s. Um, I have a balding top and like a salt and pepper shave around because this is just natural, but I can't give it up just yet. Um, <laughs> I'm a, I am one of the military scientists on board. I um, have been mostly, you know, tracking water levels and salinity, and everything is not great right now. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. So. Now we're going to define the second most important characteristic of our characters, which is our moments. Moments detail a personal scene or event that will be played out for each character at some point during the session. So imagine like literally a, a, a scene that you would like to see your character experience. Um, this is something significant uh, that in living this moment, a character will have the opportunity to find hope. Hope in this game is a mechanic where if you succeed when you uh, have your moment where you make a conflict roll, if you succeed, you will gain a hope die and that hope die can be added to your pool uh, when you uh, roll on conflicts. That hope die will never go away on a one. You can always keep it. And the hope die does succeed on a roll of five or six. 
uh, not just six, which I guess I haven't defined that yet. But yes, we only succeed on six. So write down a character moment by saying, I will find hope X. So I will find hope seeing a loved one. I will find hope getting a message. I will find hope and however you would like your character to find that hope. Allegra, do you feel like you have that yes. moment? What is it? I will find hope disabling the engine. Okay, gotcha. I will find hope by successfully disabling the engine. Excellent. Uh, Eli, you have an idea? Um, I think I'm going to go with I'm going to find hope and I kill one of these. Okay. I like that. And Adrian. My moment is I will when I use my tools in unexpected ways to defend us. Tools Ooh. to defend us. Okay. Hell yeah. I like all those. Very good. Um, now again, uh, your traits and your moment and your brink are all going to be in a stack, right? So at the beginning of the game, you'll put them in whatever order you want. When you get to your moment, meaning it's at the top of the deck of your of the cards you have, you can use it to burn it, um, meaning that you will then have your moment. You will make a conflict roll. If you succeed, you will gain the hope dice. But if you fail, the scene will end, a candle will go out, and we will continue. You will lose hope, unfortunately. So you will not have that hope dice. Now, let's talk about finally our brinks brinks are hidden traits which show what the character may become when pushed to the edge of fear hopelessness or desperation when everything else is burned away a character's brink is their last dark refuge regardless of what a brink is they must be kept a secret until used take their final you will take their final index card and write the words i've seen you blank on the top. Now, I lied earlier, unfortunately, we will be handing this card around. So I've seen you blank, and what we'll do is the same thing. Adrian will hand to Eli. Eli, you will message Allegra. Allegra, you will message Eli. Uh, actually, yeah, but there's a special uh, element to this, which is that one of you will send me I've seen you, and what that is for is for them. Um... I guess since we've done the order, Adrian, why don't Excuse you... We just have the right I see. Okay. I've seen you. Adrian, mm -hmm. uh, if you're able to, mess. Uh, do you have the ability to message on Discord? I have my phone. Okay, message me, I've seen you, and this will be for them. <laughs> um, so it can be something like, I've seen you kill a person. I've seen you steal rations. I've seen you... Um, you know, lie, uh, you know, anything like that, anything that is obviously a, a major flaw and something that someone might pull out at the at when they are at the brink of the end of their story. Uh, take a moment if you need to. And so I'm this supposed to send like a, one. So this is a bad thing that someone's done. This is a bad thing that someone has done in the past that represents their fear, their hopelessness, or their desperation. Okay. Uh, let's see if I... I have not gotten that yet. I keep auto-correcting, sorry. That's okay. Okay, I yep. just received it. Okay, this is a good one. All right. Now, um, the interesting thing is that you've written one for someone else, so you technically know that secret that you're passing on to someone else. Uh, so let that play out roleplay-wise however you like. Um, additionally, uh, Adrian, you have knowledge of these creatures that, or of them, excuse me, that uh, no one else knows. So feel free to share that when you feel that might be appropriate. Doesn't have to be in the beginning uh, effectively. Has everyone successfully passed off this brink? Mm -hmm. Okay. This was my, can I ask a clarifying question? I'm sorry. Of course. So the brink that I sent to Eli, that's a thing that I know about her character? Yes. Okay. And she sent me a thing that she knows about my character. 
Yes. Gotcha. And you'll send me one here shortly, right? Yeah. Uh, I uh, I guess I could send you one, huh? I guess because no one has sent you one. Let's see. Because they have seen me do something. <laughs> I'll send it right now. And no, you are not allowed to see this one. <laughs> like what? I don't want to know. All right, I'm sending it now. All right, so we've Ooh. gone over our brinks. Um, we are going to talk real quickly about uh, any questions. In that file that I've seen you. Yeah, Did Brink you goes not... in the pile, right? It goes at the bottom of the pile. The brink is the only one that you go at the bottom of the pile. Uh, the pile can be arranged any other way you prefer, though. So you can begin with a vice, a virtue, or your moment, whichever one you'd like to do first. Just because you burn a vice or a virtue doesn't mean it goes away or that it, it, it stops being a, a truth about your character. It's more of a mechanical, uh, okay, we're burning this to reroll dice is, is the idea. Okay. After rolling to resolve a conflict, if your brink is active, meaning it's at the top of the deck, and whenever I say active, I mean for any of the cards, vice, virtue, active, it means it's at the top, you may choose to embrace it. This allows you to re-roll your entire die pool. When a brink is embraced, the full pool of dice must be re-rolled, even dice that landed on a six. I'll remind you this when we get there, because that'll be closer to the end of the game. Um, has everyone arranged their cards? Okay. Maroons. Your characters have on you whatever you have got in your pockets or on your person. Equipment beyond this can only be acquired through establishing truths or conflicts to locate supplies. So, uh, so, so you, things that we physically have upon us? like Whatever I, you physically have on you right now is what your character has on you. Well, I, my character has magic cards, so... <laughs> I gotta wait. <laughs> I gotta. Okay. I think cool. that's a that's a great way to have passed the time uh, in these ten days Shit. you've been all together. Uh, all right. So I'm going to establish the scene and we're going to begin the game. Is everyone ready? Sure. All right. So you guys are all in a cabin. It's dark. It's dank. Many of you have not been able to shower. You've been eating food out of cans and rations, so there's kind of a stench of rotting food in the air. Maybe it's mixed with the smell of rotting flesh or dead bodies. Something else, some other smell is in the air. And you have heard the ship and its engines come back to life. The lights, I'll say that because the engine has come back to life, only the basic emergency lights are on. The occasional light. There's maybe one in your room, maybe one in the hallway every 20 or so feet. And you feel the lurch of the ship move. And your hearts begin to race. For a moment, maybe there's some kind of hope, but all you ever hear is screams or the howls of the wind, so there's no way this can be good. You all kind of look at each other and realize that something needs to be done. I would say probably uh, Eustace, Eustace being a scientist, you're able to do the math quickly and you can tell that the ship is on its way to the closest shore and we'll say it's probably the California shore and this can't be good. So what is going to happen next? is up to you. Who the hell is moving my ship? I don't know, but it can't be anyone good. <sighs> We're not even going, like, I'm. if, if there's a window, I'm going to try to see if I can look outside, see if I can tell where we're heading. You look outside, and what's so unnerving is that there is no sun, there is no moon, and it's even hard to see the water because there is just nothing to reflect it. In fact, maybe what you do see is the little bit of emergency lighting that has turned back on is reflecting on the water, but there's nothing out there. 
Um, before we continue, I realized one last vital thing, which is we need to begin the scene deciding our truths. So these things are true. The world is dark. And we, we are, are alive. alive. There are nine additional truths that you may all come up with, and we can go one at a time, um, that are true about the world and about this scene in particular. They can be anything you like. Um, does anyone feel like they have a truth that they are ready to share? Would it be like um, wherever we're going, we're not going in the original direction we were intending? Yeah, absolutely. So different direction than intended. Yeah. Uh, it might be it might be good for you guys to make notes of these as well. I got. Okay. So that was Eli's truth. Anyone else have a truth for the scene? Yeah. Go um, ahead, Adrian. Uh, the ship is still in relatively good repair. Okay. Even with this incursion. Okay. Ship is in working condition. Which means its engines is working and likely all of its weapons are working. Allegra. The last we heard, they, the, in, the interlopers, right. were only in two cities. So the last communication maybe you received mm -hmm. made clear. Maybe, maybe they were like on the East Coast. And so if we let them come to the West Coast, then. Absolutely. That makes sense. Um, I can come up with the truth as well. Um, the there's an intercom system within the ship that is not functioning but repairable. Anyone else with the truth? We have five more. I got another one. Go ahead, Adrian. The reason our store is closed is because there's one scratching right outside. Ooh. <laughs> one um, scratching right outside. I love players like Adrian who will throw themselves into the brink of destruction instead of forcing me to do it. <laughs> Cries with a winky face. Allegra, Eli? Mm. Adrian changed my... <laughs> I'm sorry. Here, have chaos. Mine was like, we know that they're like two floors down. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can decide, you know, maybe, well, no, go ahead, go ahead. Well, that, that changes it, so give me, give me both a second. Can... Because you could have the one that's at our door and others downstairs. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. The last time we saw or heard them was in the kitchen two floors. Okay, so two floors up in the kitchen, so we'll know to probably avoid the kitchen. Allegra. Um, the last time we were on deck, um, the ship was moving through lots of dead fish. Hmm. So lots of dead fish. The last time we were on deck. Okay. I'm going to say that you, the last time you communicated with someone else uh, who was on the ship, they mentioned there were that most of them had swarmed the deck of the ship, meaning they might have gone down into the ship a little bit, but the vast majority of them are on the top deck of the ship. Now I need just one more if someone else has a good one. Adrian, you seem to be full of them. 
I mean, are they gonna let me do it? Do it, do it, do it. Oh, no. By all means, by all means. Uh, Fuck it have, up. We have found dog tags. Uh, we have not found corpses. Okay. Oh, that's a good one. Ah. We'll, we'll say that um, because of this truth, you guys probably each have one or two or a couple dog tags. Oh, no. You maybe of your friends and your coworkers, etc. And we are alive. <laughs> and we are alive. Right. That's the last one. Are we so alive? we've we've defined the truth for this scene. Please continue. Uh, Serge, don't we have to do the recording thing? Oh my gosh! Thank you. All right. <laughs> last last thing we have to do. <laughs> last, last last thing. Is pull, out you. pull out your phones. Pull out your phones. Pull up the recording app. And I would like you to record a message. This message is basically the final message your character is saying into a recording, maybe saving it for posterity in the hopes that somebody finds it. Um, you can say whatever you want. Uh, you know, usually it's something that kind of defines your character, defines the situation. Um, doesn't have to be very long, just a couple of seconds. And, um, who would like to go first? Oh, are we not supposed to do this in secret? You are going to do it. No, you will do it now uh, in front of everyone. Oh, God. Oh, fuck, do I not have the needs to record? You can use, like, video Usually, recording. yeah, there so, is. Yeah. I've moved all my stuff around. So, yeah, there's voice memos is usually the app you can use unless you've deleted mm -hmm. it. Uh, if you have deleted it, you could always use Adrian's if they have one. I can go if we want. Sure, yeah, go ahead, go uh, Allegra. All right. Well, uh, that sucked. This whole situation sucks, actually. This is really shitty. But we're living through historic times. We're continuing to live through historic times. I'd love to live in a time where things were just chill. That'd be super cool. Um, but hey... That's life, or something like that. Also, Archie, I slept with your girlfriend. Sorry. Amazing. Love it. Adrian, are you ready to record your memo? Yeah. Go for it. That's photo mode. Sorry, one sec. <laughs> <laughs> <My nose. laughs> Count. Eustace, December 12th, whatever year this fucking is. <laughs> um, couple things. Jeremy, I'm sorry. You know what for. Um, it couldn't be helped. I had to uh, make sure that the research things were still fine. You know how it is. <sighs> um... Look, I... I'm very tired. <laughs> I should have clearly retired a couple of years ago, but, um... I guess I can't retire now. That pension isn't pretty much good. <laughs> with what I've seen. Um... Well, I will keep, uh, four logs for posterity's sake in case anyone else comes upon these, um... If I'm able to identify any traits about these creatures, I will um, make sure that you have it. Um, but until then, signing off. Excellent. Eli, our final memo. Please begin whenever you're ready. Fuck. I hate being on the spot. <laughs> scary, right? <laughs> Every time. I don't know. I never know what to fucking say. Um, Doesn't have to be some great eulogy. Just the final words of your character. All I know is that there's me, um, like, <laughs> Cyrus? Cyrus. Oh, okay, let me, let me redo that one. <laughs> All I know is, is me, Yusuf, and Cyrus. I know, unless other crew members are holed out, most of them are dead. 
if you get this recording, know that we try whatever we could to stop this. Beautiful. Okay, now. Oh. Sorry. Now, with all of our things out of the way, we may continue the first scene. You are holed up in the cabin. Um, uh, Jules, you've already looked out. There is nothing. Uh, we'll say with our new truth, you can still see the occasional form of a dead fish, sometimes huge, a whale or a dolphin. What do you want to do? Whatever we do, we can't stay here any longer. No, it smells terrible in here. Yes, clearly we should open the door and let our guest in. Um, how are you doing? Are you having a good day? Don't ask it that. It's not going to answer. I've already tried to get the answers out of them. There's got to be a better way around this. Is it you, mechanic, right? You, there's no other passage. There's only other way we can get, a, you know, down to the next floor. Um. Is, uh... As I look around, is this one of those like adjoining rooms where there's like a? <laughs> I will say, for the sake of not being just confined into one room with no exit, I will say, yeah, maybe, maybe it is a connected room. <laughs> cool. Bless you. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I turn to the connected room and I say, I don't know if it's locked. I think that was uh, Stillinger's room. He was kind of like fastidious about his shit so it might be locked but it might not and also breaking down that door is a lot easier than breaking down the other door well maybe we should start there then do you mind uh, open the door I'll uh I'll do my best I don't have a ton of tools on me I don't even think it's worth rolling a conflict roll for this you approach the door and being the mechanic of the ship you know how to unlock it it unlocks and reveals another cabin, empty, no bodies, no rations, just a couple of bunks, and another possible exit. Not There's much further, here. But... Is there anything in here we could maybe arm ourselves with? Because I have a pen. That, that would require a conflict roll. If you would like to look for something... You guys have a pool of 10 dice that you will share amongst the three of you. You may decide, Eli, how many dice you'd like to use to try to achieve a success. Let me know and let everyone know so we know how many dice are being used. Six okay? Six is fine. Okay. Just know that in every scene you can only have 10 and any ones will disappear. Huh. Fun. Cool. No successes, and I rolled the one on okay. one die. So that now we one have die nine dice. Away. Now you only have nine die left in the scene, and I am unable to roll because I have no die, so I can't roll against you. However, I will say that you probably don't have narrative control, and the simplest answer is you don't find any useful weapons. Certainly not anything that you think will kill whatever they are. We need to arm ourselves as soon as fucking possible. I mean, either one of you can use a gun. I mean, we're all trained to use guns in basic boot camp. It's been a hot second, but I think I am, should be fine. Uh, you going to be comfortable firing a weapon or something or using a weapon? I mean, it's point and shoot, right? Like, click, click. You say it so casually. <laughs> um, well, when it's monsters, yeah. If it was people, maybe not, but... Welcome to the Navy, everybody. <sighs> we'll, we'll, we'll take that road when we get there. Um, all right. Well, I assume the monster is still scratching at the other door. So... I will say you have not heard the scratching in a little bit. So you don't know exactly where they might be. Hmm. Does the door... When the door opens out, does it open out and block the... Like, is it small and, like... Is the hallway tight enough that it opens up and blocks the hallway? I have a or feeling it that inward? it probably opens mm -hmm. inward. Oh, okay. Just for space saving. That makes sense. So you could always try to crack it open and just like look outside. Yeah. Well, I'll do it. You want to peek it. and I'll... I'm, okay, if you're going to peek, then I'm going to stand behind the door so that if something happens, I'm going to try to push the door back closed. Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, I think this again requires a conflict roll. You may use as many d6s as you like, Allegra. Just let us know how many you use and how many are ones. I'll use if four. Is, okay. If that's okay. Just need one six to succeed. <sighs> oh, uh oh. Oh, that looks like the night went dark early. Nope, they're back. Oh. Never mind. All right, let's see. <laughs> oh, one of my dice fell. Hold on. Okay. Uh, we now have eight dice and no successes. <laughs> this is why I love playing as the GM when Allegra is a player. Because I always make things spicy. So, uh, I, so you have eight die left, no successes. Um, you do not have narrative control. And nope. I think what happens is you open the door and it's probably just, I think it's just too dark to see. It's too dark to detail anything. There's no emergency lights on in this hallway for some reason. Maybe they were destroyed. So you're walking into the dark. Can I, can I do something? Sure, what would you like to do? Um, I'm gonna pull, because you said we have whatever we have on us. I'm gonna pull one of my magic cards out of the deck I have. <laughs> I'm gonna just like reach around the door and gambit throw it and see if it yeah. hits anything. <laughs> yeah. Just to How see it, like die? if there's a reaction or to see if there's like a noise of it hitting something. Yeah. Well, there would definitely be some kind of noise. I'm just deciding whether it's... I mean, if you want to roll for a conflict, you can. And just let me know how many dice you want to use. What do we think, gang? <laughs> how successful do you want to be? So hard. Do you want to hit something or do you just want to toss a card into the hallway? <laughs> yeah, if you want to be genuinely successful, I will ask for a conflict. If you want to throw a card into the hallway, because, it, because there's no light, you will probably not see where it lands. I don't want to see, I want to hear. Sure. Then make a conflict roll. I'm doing it. All right. We're doing three this time. Okay. No successes, but we didn't lose dice. Okay. Cool. Goes into the dark. You hear it kind of slide on the ground and just come to a stop. Really love your thought process here. Look, I'm trying oh. something. All right. I have had just about enough of this, and <laughs> I pull out my phone that was in my pocket with a charge of 74% still. <laughs> Turn on the fucking flashlight and uh, a video mode and keep around the fucking door. Okay, okay. Um, I think you poke your head through and there's nothing- Oh no, nothing my head in... is not going through that door, I'm sorry. Okay. So oh, with the video mode oh, on, I so assume. smart, fuck. Video mode video on, kind of lean out. All that's going through is like a little <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think you probably look through the hallway and don't see anything. Both ways. Okay. Seems like, at least in this portion of the hallway, the coast is clear. Do you see my magic card? Again, priorities. It's right over there. Um and it's gone. Oh, I mean, just have... forest, that's fine. I have to give them some sort of name. I'm not going to keep calling them them. That's very vague, especially since one of us is non-binary. <laughs> Thank so you. So Clementine has left. Clementine, great. All right, we need we need to move. <sighs> you know that heading, I would say, left, although it's not the right terminology on a boat. It's like port or something. Port. Uh, heads to... We'll say heads um, to a mess hall, right, starboard, which is starboard, which would head uh, either up or down and further into the ship. Uh, that way, starboard. It's, we shouldn't go near the kitchen. No. Okay. Uh, we should. We should go maybe up a level. Up. They were on the deck last time. I was, I was gonna, gonna just try. I don't know. Last time we heard something that they they were also two floors down, so near the kitchens. <sighs> so we either go one floor up or we go one floor down. You I mean, know that inevitably uh, the nuclear warheads are down. Yeah. 
Oh, and we probably need to get tools to activate that because you can't just hit a hammer and you need to go boom. That's not how nuclear. Well, what tools do we work. need? Oh, yeah. Where do we need to? Get them? Well, technically, we'd have to get the because it's mostly based in software, Lieutenant. We would need to get the computers back up to uh, the bomb and then set it off. So uh, hmm. we have to go to electrical, which is down. We're going to have to go to electrical, which is down. Okay. All right, so down mm. we go. Sorry, okay. nuclear easy. <laughs> so you begin moving your way. Um, I think this should call for a conflict roll. Why don't we mm -hmm. have Adrian, since you are the one asking for or suggesting that we go to the electrical room, make a conflict roll for us. See okay. how it goes. Eight total. Just because I would really, really love to start burning through my deck for funsies. <laughs> Remind me, burning my vice just gets uh, a reroll if something goes wrong, right? Yes. And it's and if it's at the top of your deck, it's technically active. <laughs> oh. I will, uh, if I will get there, uh, I'm going to uh, not get us killed and roll eight dice. Okay. Let's hope you don't roll eight One. ones. Well, I didn't roll a numbers that matter here. The level of danger in this role. It's it's mostly two. Six twos and like a three and a four. Literally six twos. That's wild. But a okay. two times three is a six. I think what happens is, as you begin heading down the hall, you do not have narrative control, unfortunately. But does you my re roll it, though? If you'd like to burn your vice. Yes, my vice uh, is hesitant. I, however, it only allows you to roll ones. Oh, never mind. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, sweet card. To... <laughs> so what happens is, is you guys are traveling down the hall and you realize you didn't see little Clementine because they weren't in the hall. They were above it. You can oh, hear fuck. something moving in the grating just above you and you realize it's probably tracking you, probably waiting for the perfect moment to jump. That's worse. That's so much worse that it's up. What the fuck? <laughs> fuck. I'm gonna move. <laughs> Haul ass, I guess. Okay. Are there Who any wants to the lead room? the attempt to get down to the next level um, as this thing will eventually oh, reveal itself? The lieutenant will. Okay. Eight dice. Let's hope you roll a six. <laughs> I don't think we've rolled a six yet. I don't think we have. We haven't. It's us. Finally, one six. One six. Blessings. Okay. And, and no... Nice. With a six, you have narrative control. Describe to me how you guys get down to the next level safely. Pull well, out the pen, which is the only thing I have in my pocket. <laughs> And I'm just going to kind of hold it out like I would a knife. And then I'm just going to tell them the shush. And we're going to tiptoe down. Like, even though we hear the scurrying and stuff above us, um, I'm trying to keep everybody calm enough for us to get down to the next level. Be false movement. And you, like, echo into the into the uh, stairwell is going to give off our location. Okay. So although you hear Clementine, they don't hear you. And you are able to get safely downstairs. I assume there's probably a, a hatch that you're able to close and you are safely on the next level where you know that the the technology or the, uh, the uh, electrical room is and you are safe for now with still eight dice, correct? Still with eight dice, yeah. Okay. What's next? We gotta find something to defend ourselves. That pen isn't gonna do shit against those things. Yeah, I I fucking agree. Um, there's a utility there... closet, like a couple yeah. doors down, I think. Okay, we'll see if there's something there worth while. Who would like to make the conflict roll to search for this thing to defend yourself with? You like? I'll I'll do it. Okay. You know the word. <laughs> I'll roll six dice, and I won't use any of the ones that have failed me. <laughs> All right. 
DM DM Studios, thank you for rating us with a party of 13. How cool. Hello, friends. Um, I got a six, but we are now down to seven dice. Okay. Please, with the with the narrative control, describe what it is you find and where you find it. Uh, a little bit further down, there's a utility closet. Um, and it looks like we're not the first people to come through here. So there is like a pistol with a half full clip. So like six bullets. Um, there's a rifle with only one round in it. And there is a mop with a broken wooden uh, handle that has like a pair of scissors taped to it. Cool. So who gets what? I'm going to I'm going to hand the mop to uh, Cyrus and I'm going to hand the yes. shot I'm going to hand the shotgun <laughs> to Yusuf. And I'm gonna a shotgun or a rifle? What was a rifle? I'm sorry. Rifle. It was a rifle with one shot. So I'm going to give them the shot and then I'm going to take the pistol. <laughs> okay. You guys have some weapons now. You feel a tiny bit safer. It's still pitch black using Adrian's, uh, using uh, U uh, Eustace's phone to kind of light your way. Where What's is the, the electrical? Step? Yeah, where's electric? Uh, we're on the, what, third floor down? Third floor down. We need, uh, <laughs> Cyrus is trying to, like, mind map everything. Uh, two doors down on the left. Two doors uh, on this on this floor? Yeah, two doors down on the left. Okay. That'll power the, the nuclear room downstairs? Um, I think so. That might also just be electrical just to the captain. I can't remember if that one's for the captain and the one down one floor is for everything or if it's vice versa. Uh, our oh, uh, friends have dropped out for a uh, moment. They'll be back shortly. Uh, uh, doesn't mean that they are gone forever. Uh, okay, so we are deciding to find the electrical room. Um, you know, since Allegra, you seem to be the person that knows where the room is, I think it makes sense that you would have to make the roll. Yeah. Uh, so we have now seven dice. Did we lose seven one dice. in the last? Okay. We did because it's me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so with seven dice, let's see if you guys can find the room. All right, seven dice. We have five dice now, but we do have a success. Okay, that's great. So with a success, why don't you narrate what it's like going down the hall, finding the room, entering the room, and what happens? Update, gang. Uh, glad you're back. I rolled again. We have five dice now instead of seven. But I did find electrical. Um, this, so, so we go down the hallway quietly. There's like clanking footsteps, even though we're trying because we have heavy boots on. Um, and as we get to the door of the electrical, um, there is a handwritten note in my handwriting um oh wait can i reroll one surge because i'm using absent-minded you can do it by burning that uh that so i can use this now and never again yes then never mind um we <laughs> we, we get to the door and there's a handwritten note from past cyrus that says dumbass go down one floor Hmm, interesting. So I wrote this to myself last time I was here, and this mm -hmm. is electrical, but it is like I thought. It is only for the captain's quarters, so we have to go down another floor to get to electrical. That does something for everyone else. My bad, LT. Now, it is a success, so if you wanted to, you could say, like, while you're in this electrical room, you could turn the lights back on. You could power something that you think might be important later down the road. If you yeah. wanted to. Um, some lights down these corridors would be helpful. Yeah, let me see. Let me see what I can do. And I guess Cyrus will go in and just start plugging, moving wires into holes and tightening things. What mechanics do, you know? 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> you, I, I think that's easy enough to do is for your character. So sure enough, the the lights for the first time in ten days over a week come back on on this floor, and yeah, your eyes have to adjust, but there is something um, nice about having the light back in your life for it being so dark for so long. What's next? Then I guess we gotta go one floor down. <laughs> sorry, okay. sorry, it's my bad. I, uh... Actually, before we move, I want to see if there's any on either side of us, just to get now get a bear, uh, uh, look at my surroundings and like determine like if there's a about. Um, uh, you dropped out for a second there. What is it you're looking for? Uh, I just wanted to get a general perception around just because we turned on lights and we have no idea what in the dark and stuff like that. So I just want to get a... looking for something in particular or no, just like a general perception or just looking for out okay. for danger. Okay. If I need to be specific. Yeah, go ahead and make a conflict roll. You have five dice to play with. We're down to, uh, to four dice. Um, and But one success. Okay, why don't you describe what it looks like? Uh, it's, you have narrative control. Maybe the floor's empty, or maybe there's something else. Mm. Well, I'm trying to avert danger. I think we can hear, like, Clem, we can hear... But they're like, they're like sealed off door, or something like that. That that way, because I'm we as far as is the only real danger afoot right now. Something I think. Uh, something I think you've all noticed is that uh, they avoid the light. So certainly, if there were any on this floor, they're skittering away. They are moving away from the light. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So no, maybe you know definitively. You know, moving forward, if we can get the lights on, we can at least keep ourselves somewhat safe. Okay, cool. Good. You Write begin that down, doctor. They don't like light. <laughs> don't like light. So you begin moving. Cool. Uh, you know that you need to go down one more floor. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's have somebody lead the way and see how getting to that next floor looks. Who wants to go? Look, I know that there's the main stairway, but we could like go a little bit further past this room and take like the office way okay it might be a little bit use more useful of the maintenance hatches how about how about we not take those stairs clementine's back there and i i think they're a little ornery right. smart idea yeah. adrian let's have you roll to see if you can get to and we go down the maintenance hatches with four dice yes the six okay three dice three dice but one success go ahead and adrian narrate getting down to the next level as we go further down the hallway we get to the like the officers um but all bolted and locked we can't get into that one um we are able to find the maintenance hatch which allows us to basically just take those you know the the shitty shitty stairs mm -hmm. that are super compact because it's also a um, we can but up and down and we can hear skittering from above okay you get down to the next level, and uh, Cyrus knows that just a couple of doors down is the next uh, electrical room. It is dark in here, so I will ask for a conflict roll to see if somebody can navigate safely to this electrical room. Who wants to do that? Tenant, you want to lead the way uh, here? We, we may have lost them. So it might be out of, really yucky. out of necessity, Allegra. You might need to make that roll. All right, what, we got three dice now? I think we have three dice, yes. All right, one, two, three. No successes, but we still have three dice. Okay, all right. Um, without the narrative control, I'll say that you guys move through the dark. You're kind of bumping your way around. Um... I think that instead of it just being a simple they are around, I think a better complication would be something like you come across a hatch or a bay door that is closed and locked, and it's not as simple as just jiggering it open. Uh, mm -hmm. 
there's something missing. Maybe maybe it requires a key. Maybe it requires a tool of some kind. Um, but your block, your path is blocked. I think is maybe the next right. best option. Like one of those between uh, between like parts of a submarine, those doors that come down. Yeah, I, I would assume yeah. like if the ship is sinking or something and they need to seal off an area, yeah. it's probably that kind of sealed bay door. And you now need to find a way to get it open to get to that electrical room that has the ability to finally arm the weapon. Uh, while we wait for them, let's go over... What can we go over <laughs> to make sure? Oh, I think they're back. I think they're back. Okay, great. Let me add them again to our chat. So um, why don't you go ahead and, and let them know what's going on here? So we were looking for the door as we were going down. I rolled. I didn't lose us any die, but we still only have three dice. Uh, there was no success. So there is a, like a, what did you call it again, sir? A bay door. Yeah, like a hatch. Come down, like a hatch door that's come down uh, in the middle of a hallway, and we can't, like, jiggle it open so we have to find a key or a tool to open it so something is blocking your path getting to the electrical room what do you guys think you need to do to get it open wait i'm the maintenance person and you don't have the access sorry it's been a weird 10 days i've lost a lot of shit arguing doesn't solve the problem what exactly do we need uh, there's like a little it's like a it's like a key but it's like weird shaped it's got like prongs and it goes in kind of like this and you you it, i can't it, you'll you'll know it when you see it it's not like a normal key mm -hmm. in the last ten, 10 days where have you been uh, where haven't i been you know uh, Thank you. You just told us the key could be anywhere on the ship. That was really useful. <laughs> um, I'll tell you where I haven't been, though. I haven't been on... No, that's a lie. I have been on deck. We went on deck a couple times. Uh, I don't think I've been... No, I've been there, too. Hmm. You're not the engineer of the ship. Where would other engineers have those... Or those... Right? Um, engineers, like, stayed... Second floor? They were close so we to the go. captain, so they're up. Okay, so now we have to go back up the ship to get the key. What? Yeah, it's not that big a deal, though. Can I check something really quick? Just give a penchant for a sticky door. Serge. <laughs> You'd like, like to see to if there's maybe a little message or something to uh, explain what's going on? Um, I'm, actually, I'm actually looking for, like, there's that and, like, hanging on the door, so I'm just like, did you fucking put the key behind one of these things? <laughs> Please. Yeah, go ahead and look and make a conflict roll. And maybe, you, maybe you'll find it. Nope. <laughs> nope. I just look like a fool. <laughs> no notes. I guess we have to go fucking back upstairs. Pass this way up there. Back where we came. Same way we came. Sorry. All right. So I assume you guys will follow the maintenance hatch and then go up the stairs again? Okay. Yeah. We'll say that you're mm -hmm. able to do that, getting through the, the room that's, you know, the, the floor that's lit. But you, when you get up to the final darkened floor where you think the key might be or the, the way to get into it, maybe probably a tool, um, somebody needs to make a conflict roll to find it. Your key. It's not my key. The engineers have the key. And yet you're the only engineer I see. I'm not an engineer. I'm a mechanic. That's a different thing. Brandis and and Alfred's would lose their shit if they heard you calling me an engineer. Well, till then. Okay, I have two successes, but we only have two dice now. Okay. With two successes, could you narrate for me the room you find and what it is you find that will probably help get the door open? Uh, Cyrus kind of feels along the wall until they find the embossed B on Brandis's door that she put there 
specifically because she felt important because she was the head engineer. Uh, and opens the door and kind of ushers everyone through and then goes to her uh, bedside table and reaches up underneath it and kind of like scrabbles their nails until they find the key taped underneath it. Don't ask me how I know this is here. I saw it once. We're not going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I think just for the sake of it making sense on a naval aircraft carrier, I feel like what would most likely be is not necessarily a, a traditional key, but like a, a a kind of tool that you use when, when the doors are jammed to kind of like manually open them up. Right. Right. So you get something like that. It has gorilla uh, tape on it, so it sticks. <laughs> I think I just need one more conflict roll to get back down those stairs and back to the door. I'll Whoever roll the would conflict. like to make that roll. All right. Two dice, LT. Two dice. No successes, but no loss of dice. Okay. Without narrative control, I think as you are making it down and you get to the floor where you know the door is, you hear that skittering again. You want to just shoot it? Is that one bullet? She, oh, I, she has like six. Where we do we know where it is? Can I we think like we because you don't have narrative? Is it close? You can use a conflict so, role to try and locate it. Yeah, I need to know how close Clementine is to okay. us with two dice. <laughs> Make that roll. No successes, but no loss of dice. It, it sounds like it's coming from everywhere. Uh, how fast Which might mean both... there's more than one. How fast can both of you run? Oh, I was going to be medboarded soon. <laughs> <laughs> My knee's a little fucked. Well, then we just need to move as fast as possible, as quickly as possible to the yeah. next floor. Uh, don't, don't hesitate. Put, don't don't think twice. In the middle. You you, you lead. I'll follow behind. Okay. All right. One, two, three, and we're gonna go. Okay. <laughs> Eli, give us another conflict roll to see if you can make it to the door and unlock it in time. Too bad. <laughs> no successes, but no loss. Circling that dream. Okay. Why don't we? I think. The skittering kind of stops for a moment as you are all running and you can hear the, the pounding of your feet on the metal floors and then it picks up as you realize the things or thing are tracking you and following right behind you. Uh, you get to the door and Cyrus, you start kind of going through the motion of, of opening it, but it is slow. What are we doing to, to stall and, and save time for Cyrus to get that door open? Uh -oh. may have lost them, unfortunately, for another time. God. Uh, <laughs> uh, Allegra, you're you're in charge right now. What what are we doing? Cyrus has their boot up on uh, up on one side and is just yanking pr like enough that they're afraid it might break. Um, but they're saying like, turn the light on it, turn the light on it, shine light on it. Okay, so would you? rather would you make the conflict roll to spot the thing or are you making a conflict roll to try to get the door open quicker probably to get the door open quicker all right so with your two dice decide how many you'd like to use and see if you can do that wouldn't it be so shitty if i lost us all of our dice when they aren't here <laughs> hey double successes hey that's awesome great so yeah, you you hear it coming. You know, I think that it's easy to say, oh, well, I mean, look, you have narrative control. Why don't you um, describe what's happening? Um, I think with their boot up and they're yelling for them to put the light on it. And as they're yelling about the light the second time, it finally gives and spins and the door kind of falls open. Uh, and Cyrus falls through with it and then just reaches through and yanks Eustace through. And I'm sh I'm assuming Lieutenant Jules is hot on hot on their tails, and as soon as it's uh, as soon as she's through, I'm gonna start slamming the door shut. Pull I'm gonna yeah. I I'm gonna pull the tool off first, and slam the door shut. 
and uh because you had a double success i also think it might be worth you defining them a little bit why don't you you know in the in that moment as eustace lifts the light uh maybe even uh 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 lieutenant jules maybe fires a shot you know we 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 see clementine for a moment do what what is something you maybe you want to describe about it <gasps> hi cuties they're back the door's I'm open. Adding them. yep the door's open um i pulled eustace through jules you're coming through um if that's okay um and so, and I got double successes. So Serge said that uh, we can define. I can define it a little bit. So I'm gonna say that these things are just stark white, pale. They the reason they don't like the sunlight is because, or they don't like light is because they are just so pale that any kind of illumination looks like it's searing them. Basically. Mm. Okay. So we, it, you know, there's this blur of white, and you can tell that uh, whatever it is, it doesn't seem to like the light. It certainly doesn't like the the light that that uh, uh, Eustace shines on it. But you're able to pull your allies into the next room and close the door, and you are now able to travel to the electrical room. Um, I'll say without issue, you are able to get into the electrical room, and I think because this is important. I will ask for a conflict roll to see if you can properly get the power on the way you want it to. Mm-hmm. Used to steer the brains of this operation. All right. My science and doctorate in science are going to be great for electrical engineering. <laughs> Look. That's a failure. <laughs> no one. How many? But... Okay. Oh. Yeah. It seems like. I think it probably seems like. Although you have what you need in here to arm the bomb, there's something else. There's something else that's missing. Something's been cut or some connection has been severed. And, um, you know, something needs to be done. Uh, Cyrus is going to start just tracing all the wires through like throughout the the electrical room and just like trying to find any like cuts or any places where things came unplugged stuff like that okay uh go ahead and make that uh roll to see if you can find or determine the problem <laughs> nope. so a- any ones or just no we haven't failure? we're still at two but uh just a f- just no successes just a slow torture uh, yep. Yeah, it, it's. It, I would assume that the problem is probably on another floor. Maybe something mm. tore through a hole, and in the process, you know, tore whatever the 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 cabling is that leads up to this room. It's not getting power. Yeah. Hmm. Uh. I'm sorry. I'm reading our, our truths right now. Intercom can be repaired. One's at our door. We saw them in the kitchen before. Uh, so, I we we looked there. It didn't work. Um, but the problem looks like it's on a different floor. Naturally. Naturally, of course. Uh, the problem's on a different floor, not here. Oh. Uh, I feel like. I feel like we should check up again. Maybe like, maybe captain's quarters. Yeah, we could try the bridge. Br- bridge, yeah, bridge would make sense. Yeah, let's Just go to the gotta bridge. Go across the deck and <sighs> deal with that. Okay. So the idea is you're going to head up, head up, get to the captain's quarters to try to determine what the problem is. Maybe we can assume that the 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 well, really you're talking about going to the helm of the ship, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we're, maybe we're, there's some, maybe there's something that can determine where the the, the fault is in the line, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead, and someone who is leading the way. 
Uh, okay. We'll say that this this determines whether you can get to the top deck a little closer to the helm. Ooh, one success. Nice. Okay, okay. Uh, Eli, why don't you describe what it is like traversing probably a couple floors, getting to that top deck, and um, and what do you find while you're up there? I mean, I think by now we've kind of gotten it into some level of rhythm walking up and down these these corridors. So we're kind of more in sync in team. So like we'll stop at a floor, look out, like something like tread off since we keep we keep navigating up and we slowly mistakenly get to where we need to go. Okay. Thank you, Mumble, for wait for uh following uh, us. Hello, thank you. So you get up to that floor. I've described as one of the truths that uh, there that you know that they have swarmed the top deck. So explain to me why the deck is swarmed, but they don't see you or interact with you. Um, I think because like there's so many of them that they're more like preoccupied with each other. You know, like you know like walruses on a beach <laughs> and we're like the little penguins trying to scurry along and as long as they don't as long as we don't bump into them no one's gonna mind. yeah maybe. maybe they're maybe they're in a kind of hibernation or they're in a kind of yeah, sleep maybe they're or... sleeping yeah yeah the <laughs> yeah, classic <laughs> so is is this a case of you are able to are you traveling like through them or are you like just under them or something I think they're like sprawled out across the whole deck and stuff like that. So we're kind of weaving in between. Maybe there's like a small bit of patch where we can walk, but it's very like tight for us to be kind of shuffling. We're just shuffling along. Okay. Well, somebody make a conflict roll to see if you can get into the helm of the ship. Who's the roll? It is the roll. Just... <laughs> Look, I've, I've done a little bit of studying. I think I can get us through this safely. I promise you. <sighs> <laughs> Give me the results here. I hope they don't cut out in this moment and we don't know what the results are. Oh no! Oh, no. They did. God damn it. <laughs> sure enough. You know, I wasn't planning on this element uh to be added to the game, but it's so wonderful that it's been added. Because it just adds so much drama to the whole moment. We really don't know what has happened. So no it could be that they rolled two ones it could be that they rolled only one or no successes we have no idea and we are at the mercy uh waiting to find out which what, what do you think it's going to be allegra from that reaction i took it as no i took it as all right so i see that they oh, are we back. have one die left and we failed <sighs> uh so it was one success one failure um we no 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 we lost one dice and it was all of them were failures. Okay, so just a straight up failure. Yeah. Um Yeah, I think as you are moving um maybe Eustace who is the oldest and has kind of a, you know, hobbly walk maybe bumps one of them or hits something that falls over and creates a little bit of a noise. And I don't think necessarily all of them are aware, but one of them at least is aware. Maybe the ones closest to you. So it is a race to get to the helm. I, I love that Adrian's you. not even here <laughs> and we're blaming it on them when she can't even defend herself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, keeps dropping them. One of um, you please make a conflict roll to see if you can get into the helm safely. It's all you, E. Oh, and I think they're about uh -oh. to disappear again. So unfortunately, it might me. need to be you, Allegra. Yeah. Shit. Uh, I'll use can, my big guy. You can blame your strong connection for your internet connection for being so responsible. It's a three, so. Okay, that's that's a failure. You don't have narrative control. You still have the one die though. Um, I think what happens is one of you gets into the helm, but I think the other two get separated in the process. Ooh. That might be 
a good compromise because in the rules of um, Ten Candles, really the characters can't die until the very end. Mm. So you're kind of safe until now or until the end, I mean. Uh, let me just quickly add them back. And... Um, Eli, so... It's all good. <laughs> so, uh, Adrian, um, there was a unsuccessful roll to try to get into the helm. I think that what happens is someone gets into the helm. I'll say that the least capable, I'll say that um, Lieutenant Jules is able to get into the helm. Oh, and they're gone again. Maybe they're restarting their modem. Oh, uh, we're oh, bouncing. Oh, we're kind of bouncing. We're, bounce. again. we're back. Thanks for sticking with us, friends. Yes, appreciate it, guys. We'll we'll Thanks have it sorry. we'll have it figured out soon. Uh, so the group is separated, and I think with only one die left, I think all three of you are separated from each other. So nobody is together. We'll say that Lieutenant Jules gets into the helm. We'll say that Eustace, you know, falls down into another floor. And uh, what happens to Cyrus? Um, Cyrus, you... Maybe what you do is you... I like the idea of maybe you are still on the deck, but you've hidden behind something. Like maybe you're behind a... Uh, you know they have those uh, those uh, dollies that push like the missiles up into the yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the aircraft the the weapon the the aircrafts and stuff like that. So maybe you're yeah. behind one of them, uh, alone, with an entire aircraft carrier full of these things. Uh, this let sucks. me add let me add them back, and then we can try to make a move with only one die. I have a feeling the scene will be ending soon. <laughs> Uh, okay, so everyone's back. Everyone is separated. Um, mm -hmm. If you heard, Jules, you are in the helm alone. Okay. Uh, Eustace, you've fallen down probably to the to the floor just below. You are alone, and uh, uh, Cyrus mm -hmm. is alone. So one of you is going to have to make a move. Who wants to try to do it? I think I'll make the move because I'm in the helm. I want to see if I can find, like bright like deck lights that might be attached Ooh. to the helm in order to see if i can scatter every every thing on the deck um cool make, make the roll with only one die <laughs> cries it's a fail okay yeah. not a one though mm -mm. okay not a one um yeah i think that you not being an engineer or a mechanic or having a very hard time making sense of this you are a lieutenant though so i think it's just I'm it pushing might, buttons. <laughs> you're pushing buttons. It's also a little bit of panic, too. I think you're also just kind of freaking out over the situation. You've been separated for the first time. Um, would, it, would someone else like to do something? You're all on different parts of the ship now. Are the things awake now? I think there's probably at least one kind of banging on the helm door, you know, chasing after... Uh, Jewels. I am I'm gonna break a piece off of my mop stick and I'm gonna look around for a, like a crate or something like a metal crate or something and I'm gonna try and throw the stick so that it bangs off of the the crate so it, the thing is distracted sure, from the helm. Sure. Yeah. Make uh make that conflict roll with one die. That's a failure, but okay. it's not a one. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to make things interesting. You throw that stick, and it's dark out. It's hard to see, and you don't realize that you're not throwing it at a crate. You're throwing it at a group of um, tomahawk missiles that are sitting on the deck of the ship. And uh, just because I want to make things fun, one of them explodes, and there is this incredible ah. explosion um that Sorry. lights up the deck of the ship just and i think everything on the top deck of the ship wakes up most of them probably scurrying away from the explosion um i'll say that um i'm deciding now that that they have the ability to fly and some of them kind of go out go up into the sky uh, some of them are taken out by it but there are so many that it's it's you know it's a drop in the bucket 
Um, but you have revealed yourself. Uh, and so I think a couple of them probably lock eyes. Their red beady eyes are locked on you. Fuck. Um, Adrian, you have not gone yet. What would you like to do? What would Eustace like to do to maybe help in this situation? Hey, Serge. There's yes. an explosion on the deck, right? Yes. And it's light upside the deck, right? So I probably fell through a hole, right? I think that you probably fell down like like a set of stairs that lead down. So you're like just above, you're just below the the, the, the top deck. Well, they're absolutely going to come down those stairs because it's dark down here. Um, That's true. That's I'm going true. to fucking run. <laughs> okay. Are you running to look for a place to hide or are you running just to get ahead of them? Look to hide. Okay. Looking for a place to hide, please make your roll. Oh my yes! god! <laughs> I got a one. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> With that, I scene... celebrate my failures. Yes. <laughs> what is that? So you do, not, now? you do not find a place to hide, and I think at best you are just in the process of running as you can hear these things clamoring around <laughs> the, uh, the the hallway as you run from them. One candle will go out. And we are down now to nine candles. And as we must do with every, um, with every new scene, these things are true. The world is dark. And we are, we are alive. alive. <laughs> you now have eight additional truths that you may add to the new scene. What truths would we like to add now? Um, so these are still applicable, but we have eight more now? Yeah, effectively, you're kind of, Yeah, I mean, uh, we can say that the previous ones are still applicable, but we'll, we'll add new ones. And, you know, mm. these truths can help you in some way. You could say that um, there is a, uh, a way of fixing the power that is just a matter of X, Y, or Z, or, you know, you can, you can define these truths to help you if you want. Yeah, I'm um... We can. Well, an obvious one is that we can set off missiles accidentally. Okay. <laughs> so missiles can be used. What we'll say. What else? What's another truth that we would like to add? There are cameras on the ship. And with okay. the one corridor that's illuminated, we have sight in that area of what we can see. Camera system on and working. Okay. Um, I'll be nice and say that these camera systems have night vision. Oh. Dope. Is that a separate truth? It's a separate truth, yeah. Adrian? Uh, there's a door closed in the bridge and someone is screaming behind it. It just started. Mm. Uh, door closed. Uh, did you say it was where? In the engine room? No, no. It's in the it's in the, the bridge. Okay. Door closed in the bridge and someone is screaming behind it. Love that. Anyone else have a truth they'd like to add? Daryl, we're talking um, like tomahawk missiles. Something you'd, you'd put on an aircraft. One, two, three, four. Um, we have uh, four currently, yeah. So four more needed. The creatures can fly, but they can't stay up for long. Okay. The gliders. Okay. Yeah, they're yep, more gliders. gliders. Love that. Um, we do need to kind of define why the ship was turned on again. Maybe it's the person hiding in the uh, in the ship, but I'll add a truth, which is that within an hour, the ship will be close enough uh, to its port.
Okay. We've got about an hour left. Hmm. Adrian or Eli, we need two more. Uh, the creatures that were affected by the explosion and not killed have mutated. Mm. <sighs> Sorry, guys. God damn. <laughs> The, the the creatures who were hit by the bomb are affected? Yeah, the ones that mutated? are affected by the actual explosion have changed in some way. Hmm. I like that. Eli, any other ones? Uh, I'm not the only one at the helm. <laughs> in the helm. Okay. Somebody else is there. And they're the one steering us off course. Okay, so we have someone behind a door at the helm who is screaming, and we have apparently some other person uh, at the helm who is not behind that door. So it sounds like there's two people. We'll begin our scene. I now have one die that I can use uh, to compete against you guys. You guys have nine dice in your pool. Uh, we are separated. Let's start with Jules, since kind of seems like uh, you have the most that you can do. Do you want to... Well, what do you want to do? Um, after I spent all this time trying to push the buttons and I can't get deck lights on, then I finally notice that um, that's when the screaming starts behind the door. Yeah. And then I get a general sense of my surroundings now, and I realize I'm not the only one in the room, so I'm going to draw my weapon. And... I don't want to... Uh, maybe I'll just pop off a shot because I'm just nervous and scared. Okay. At this person. Are you trying to kill the person? Are you trying to get their attention? What's what, what are you uh, trying more, to... more of an attention. Okay, so go ahead and make a conflict roll with the die you have. I'll say that there's also uh, at least one of the things kind of banging on the helm door trying yeah. to get in. Is it a creature or a person? It's them, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Me? Them. The, the Clementines. Clementines. <laughs> Clementines, yes. I have to remember that's what we're using now. Ooh, two successes. Okay, okay. Uh, narrate for me who you find and, you know, what, what, what they're all about. I think it's like a member of the crew. Um, but they don't, like, they're, like, extremely agitated. They're, like, sweating profusely and maybe there's like a wound or something or like an attachment of something from the creature on it oh interesting i like that yeah i like that and it, and it seems like their hands are like gripped tightly to the steer to the the steering um so that even when i accidentally pop off a shot that just goes by them it doesn't seem to allow them to like let go Okay, and you know, you 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 probably call out to them, tell them to stand down, and they don't seem to. Do they yeah. explain to you because you have narrative control? Do they explain what they're doing or why they are driving the ship? I don't think so. I think it's like some weird like babbling and muttering and stuff like that. They're trying to say something, but it seems like they can't get it out. Okay, I, I think your character has a decision to make. You know, do they let this person continue to steer the ship to where you know? It's heading, uh, or do you try to stop them in some way? I think I'm going to try to stop them, but I'm not going to do. Uh, I want to try to stop them with my hands first before I try to actually okay. shoot them. All right. How many dice are you rolling? Five. All right. Let's hope one of them is a success. No successes and a loss of dice or a loss of. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll roll against you. See if I can gain. The narrative control. <laughs> oh, I do with the one success. Um, I think this person is not freaking out. They are not in a state of panic. They're like a zombie. They're like they're like being controlled by this thing that's attached to them. Mm -hmm. And when you go to just kind of gently push them off, they look at you with this malice in their eyes, and they just start attacking you, and you become engaged with this person. And we'll cut away from you for a second. Allegra, <laughs> Cyrus is on the deck of the ship. A couple of them have noticed you, and they're probably moving towards you, not not to mention the, the couple that are kind of flying, gliding above you. What is Cyrus doing to get out of this mess? Uh, Cyrus is feeling cornered. 
so <laughs> I think <laughs> I think they're gonna stumble over to the other tomahawk missiles and just raise their their uh their mops, their very short mop stick with the scissors on it now, and just look at all of the little creatures and say, I'll fucking do it. Don't think I won't. <laughs> little intimidation. Yeah, uh, go ahead with as many dice as you like. See if you can How many we got right now? Things. Six? Seven. Seven? seven? One, two, three, four. I'm going to use all seven. That's fair. Aha! <laughs> But you roll, fam. <laughs> Sad. How many? That's how many? Is, how many ones? Put up a number. Holy shit! Three ones. Three <laughs> ones. Um, I don't have narrative control, so it's kind of a joint decision here. I think now that I have die, um, I don't think they're intimidated. No. I think they continue to move towards you, and I, and I think when you know, like you look to your left and you see some of them are starting to mutate, like where they blew up, like new arms and new heads oh, are gross, starting to gross, come gross, out gross. of them. Um, yeah, you've got to run, or <laughs> they're going to be all over you. Oh, I'm tired of running, and they take off running. Okay, uh, Adrian. Uh, Eustace is running. Speaking of running, and there is a whole swarm of them behind you. Uh, they are moments away from getting on top of you. What what are you going to do? Cool. I think that Eustace has has fallen down the stairs a couple bit because you know his knee's bad. Um, so he's running, and he goes, "There are fucking bulkheads here. I'm gonna try to slam one of these bulkheads so I can buy myself some time. Like just okay. you know, you close it and then latch it so that way they can't get through that door. That's what you. Thank you do for using things. the correct terminology that the other three of us don't know. Bulkhead. <laughs> there we go. Adrian. All right. She knows what's up. You know, the thing that you close to make sure shit don't sink anymore. All right, see if you can close that bulkhead in time. Uh, that door will not save us from uh, sinking. A metal, a metal door. Yay, success, but there's a one. We have three left. Okay, with three dice left, you close the door. Go ahead and narrate what happens. Uh, I think there's just, there's this moment of, like, I've still got the, the, the shotgun with one shot, and I'm like, nah, not yet. <laughs> And I, I close the door and I just start rub, like turning that big knob on it. And then as soon as you hear the click, there's like a second of silence and then just of a bunch yeah. of these things running into it. Yeah. Is there anything in this room that might be worth noting? Uh, again, you have narrative control, so. I think um, there is an intercom like next to it because there's no, I think there'd be an intercom on both sides for depending on which way it's closing yeah. but i'm gonna yeah. pick up the intercom and test it to see if i can get in contact with anybody else at this point now i did establish that the intercoms exist but they need a little bit of repair so i think that you don't you get static basically um maybe but this maybe, the place that it can be fixed maybe you are in the place that it can be fixed sure um, and I think that uh, Eli, although their character is engaged with, uh, uh, you know, kind of a zombie person, they can probably hear the static coming out of the communication. So it's possible to communicate, just not yet. Uh, let's go back to Eli. Um, Eli, how are you going to get out of this? I got to fight this person now. Yeah. And remember, so you do have somebody else on the on another door behind you that's like screaming to be let out. Okay, so I'm gonna, then that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to, like, kick this person off of me and make for the door with that person behind them. Okay. Um, to try to see if I can get, hopefully, God, may it be a friend. Okay. <laughs> friend or foe. Friend or foe. I don't know. No successes. No successes. No, no loss of dice. Okay. Uh, let me let me roll. I keep forgetting myself to roll. Uh, that's not a success for me either. Let's come up. What what what's the mutual decision here? I you think. Got, uh, go ahead. I think maybe I do for like manage to like get off. So I'm making momentum to the door, but I get like leg sweeped or I get like pulled back, and now we're yeah. in a grapple situation again. Um, yeah. But I'm like reaching out for the door. Okay, reaching out for the door, you're a little bit closer, but you're not, you're not any closer to kind of getting it open. Uh, do you want to try to kind of finish this person off, or what, what's the next priority? Would this can be considered, a because uh, I have a moment about killing a creature, would, sure. that, would that be an opportunity to use this? Absolutely. 
cool, then I'm going to do that. Okay, so we metaphorically burn this, which will allow you to uh, re-roll uh, any ones. Go ahead and, and we'll say that you roll, roll some dice now, however many you'd like, and if you get any ones, you can um, re-roll them. No ones, but one success. Yeah. Okay, that's a success. Um, we'll say that the trade is still active, and on the next one, this is a little not orthodox for the way you play the game, but we'll say that if you roll any ones, you can re-roll it because the trade is active. But talk to me about how using the trait or using the uh, – this is a moment. Yeah. Um, Actually, and also because you succeeded, you have you gain a hope dice. So you oh. may, you know, keep a keep a d6 on you. You can use this for all the further rolls that you make. Five and six is a success on that hope dice. So make okay. sure it's different than the rest of the hope dice sure, or sure. the rest of the dice period. Uh, but narrate the scene. What happens? Um, I think we're in a kerfuffle for a minute. I think instead of using my gun, I'm going to use the pen I have on them, and I'm going to stab them. Yeah. Like in the neck or something or where that little yeah maybe that thing thing that's coming out so i just stab it and that buys me enough time to get to the door and start to put like roll it and uh the bulkhead and uh start pulling it open to see who okay. is behind the door let's see who's behind the door roll some conflict dice and hopefully they are friendly you may as well use the hope because we can't lose it yeah okay uh one success. Um, one success. If you have any ones, you can re-roll those. No ones. Okay. Uh, with one success, narrate to me who is on the other side. Um, I want to say that it's one of the members of the the crew on the helm, maybe a navigator or somebody, somebody who got pushed into this area by the, the person at the helm. Yeah. Um, and was, like, locked behind there and has been trying to... Uh, once they heard, like, the whole commotion outside on the deck thought that was an opportunity to try to see if there was somebody around to help them um gotcha they're out there they're probably sweating buckets they're they're terrified i i would imagine they've probably been stuck there for a while they're probably pretty emaciated as well yeah um, they've been there for the last couple of days yeah yeah uh they probably inform you you know, if if uh, you know, you probably bring them to the helm and show them what's going on. They probably mm -hmm. inform you that the ship is close to uh, reaching a, the the port of California or the yeah. or, of Los Angeles or wherever it might be heading. Mm -hmm. um, what's what's the next move with this person? They do seem like they probably aren't going to be able to go very far unless they eat or drink or something like that. Okay, and we don't have any rations on us, right? We have toast. We have toast. We have toast. Does that count? <laughs> There's toast right there, sir. Does that? Hey, count? I'll, I'll I'll count it. Okay, fine. I'll give him pocket toast and, <laughs> and pull it out of my pocket and try to give it to him. So he uh, he meekly eats some pocket toast. Seems to be feeling a little bit better. Um, we still need to find a way to activate the the nuclear, right? Mm -hmm. You know that yeah. You know that there's something that's been severed. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think that, you know, if you'd like, you can make a conflict roll to see if this person can help you determine that. Sure. That's what I'm going to do. Ooh, two successes. Very good. No, lo no loss of dice. What, what, what does this person tell you that helps you understand how to fix the problem? Um, so we, we were successfully able to turn all the power on for it. Right. That I don't know exactly what we haven't been able to accomplish. We kind of established that there were two electrical rooms. One of them controlled the the the, the lighting for the floor that you had been on. Mm -hmm. The other one is supposed to be able to arm the weapon, and that is where you found that there was some kind of issue not allowing it to turn on and to arm it. Okay. Then yeah. Then I'm asking them for any like. I don't know, just how we can turn the power on and activate this. Like, what other yeah. rooms we need to go through, like, uh, what other system or protocols that they might be familiar with that we need to get. You know, it's down to you. You can either decide, maybe they are able to point out, look, there are cables that are on this floor that are severed and you guys need to mend <laughs> them, or some other some other reason. Let's, yeah, let's do that. Then, okay. yeah. So, so they're able to finally tell you exactly to pinpoint where the problem is. And now it's a matter of gathering up your allies and getting to that problem. <laughs> uh, let's let's cut away for a second. Allegra, 
Um, Cyrus is now running on the deck of the ship. Uh, what are you trying to do? Uh, what are things on ships? Uh, you can try Cyrus... to jump into an aircraft, ca- uh, into a, a, a plane, and plane. Yeah, uh, Cyrus is actually gonna run by one of those big spotlights that some like when someone falls overboard you know how they're like men overboard and then they yell and then they have a life preserver and then it's dark sometimes so they have a spotlight yeah you know <laughs> very very familiar with this process yes uh i think cyrus is gonna try and find that spotlight okay we have three dice left right guys yes uh, so with a pool of three let us know you do oh and a hope dice and, no, 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 you have a hope dice, Eli. Oh, Every have... person, yeah. Oh, okay, I oh. see, I see. <laughs> if you die, you can hand your hope dice to uh, somebody. Cool, good to know. That's no successes and a one. Okay, Ooh. with two dice left, let me see how I do. Nope, I don't have any success either. Um, I think you probably get to the light, but the light is not really being powered right now, so it doesn't or like turn. The bulb but... might have been smashed too. Oh yeah, maybe by that too. Creatures. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <sighs> you're in a tough spot here. There's a couple barreling down on you. What are you doing? Wind up, I guess, and go to swing. You're gonna try oh. to try to attack them, try to fend them off. Um, you know, I don't think you can you can fend them off forever. Is no. the idea that you can? <coughs> are you trying to fend them off long enough to get down a level or to get away? Or yeah, I think I'm just trying to like, like the one in the front. I think I'm just trying to like knock it down so that the others have to go over it, so I have like a little bit of extra time. Okay, with two dice, let's hope you get at least one success. That's a six, but also a one. Okay, (laughs) Um, all right. Uh, You know, again, if you want, you can burn one of your traits or one of the uh, things you have on you to re-roll that one if you want, but it is a success. Absent-minded doesn't really... I don't know how absent-minded would super be applicable here. You know, you could always... uh, there's got to be, like, a door right behind you that would, like, absolutely, oh, like, get you yeah, out yeah, of Yeah, you forgot you left something behind or, yeah. you know. There's, like, a door right there that I could take. Yeah, I'll, I'll re-roll this one. Okay, so you will metaphorically burn that. Good night, absent one. Uh, I rolled a four. So, we, so we're back at two dice. Yeah. You're back at two dice. Okay. And uh, you still have one success only. Narrate to me how you get away from these things. Uh, I think I swing and I don't Using fully, your absent-minded like... trait. Yeah. I, f- I swing and I don't fully do it. I just kind of clip it across, like, the nose or something. And as it's kind of shrieking and spinning, I turn like I'm going to go to the, the stairs that I knew about and I catch sight of, like, a little note I left for myself by the other door fluttering in the window. I go, oh, fuck! Right! And I pull open the door and run in. <laughs> I love these notes left all over the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's a bit now, Verge. <laughs> you make it down. You're probably on the same level as as Adrian as Eustace is now. Uh, let's go to Eustace. Eustace, you're in the room. Uh, you're probably in the room that might be able to fix the communications. Do you want to try to do that? Yes. Okay. With two dice, let's see if you can do that. I believe in you. <laughs> it didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> It's not bad either. It's just no. Okay. No, okay. Le- let me see how I do. Nope. No success for me either. Um, I think probably you just made a mistake and you're probably not in the exact room you need to fix the communications. <laughs> you thought you were. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's no way out. There's no other exit. No, so this is like a server room or something. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Cool. Oh. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Uh, uh, Jules, you know where to go. You know you need to collect your allies. What's the first move? Um, the first thing I'm going to do is collect the dog tag of the person that died. Okay. Um, I'm going to collect it, add it to the, the hand fistful I have already. Um, and then I'm going to... Man, I don't have another weapon. I'm just going to have this guy stand behind me, and we're going to start working our way down to find 
the next person we can possibly find. Okay. Um, I think you need to make a conflict roll first to see if you can find an exit other than the one you came in from, mm -hmm. which you know is the top deck. Unless you want to go through that, you know, and, and hope that you no, are if sneaking there's an quiet. Internal, yeah, no, if there's an internal way for us to go yeah. down, I'd like to take that route. You know what? I'll, I'll even, I'll, I'll keep you from rolling because I just think it would make sense that there would be an internal way. So yeah. we'll say that you do go down, um... However, this hallway, as we established with Eustace, was full of these things. So now it's a matter of, can you get to Eustace's room or distract them? You know, wh what do you want to do with this next conflict role? If they're behind the door, then yeah, I'm going to try to see if there's a way we can distract them to go back down the yeah. hallway so that we can uh, squeeze in and try to get Eustace out. Yep. <laughs> Make that uh, roll with two dice. <laughs> Ooh, one success. Okay. Uh, narrate, narrate how you're able to get them away. Um, I'm gonna ask the person I'm with to see if they have anything in their like pockets or something, and they have like something metallic, like a I don't know, like a phone or something like that. Oh, okay. yeah, phone. I'm gonna turn the flashlight on the phone. And I'm going to kind of like throw it in a way that distracts them. And hopefully the light also will make them scatter at the same time because they're spooked in light. And you, and you do that. And, and sure enough, they, they scatter moving in the direction. Are these things human sized? Are they smaller? Bigger? What do you think? I want to say that they're smaller. Okay. So but that they're more that, that smaller, but, but like, not like whole lot smaller. Yeah. Enough to be a little bit more like a big dog. Yeah, okay. much more mobility than we would have in here. <laughs> like this, you're a size, if you will. Like a big hippo dog. Um, big hippo. Yeah. Okay. So tail. yeah, sure enough, you do that. Oh, now, yeah. with your success, do you want to get in there with you, uh, Eustace, or do you want to pull them out of that room? I want to pull them out and go back okay. down our hallway because I'm just trying to get get <laughs> get. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Um. The two of you are together. What's the next move? Um, you know, you need to find um, Cirrus. We're Cyrus. Oh, Cirrus. We're Cirrus. I have no idea. I fell down the stairs. <sighs> um, so we could get to the comms room. It's probably close to this, given that this is the server room. Um, if we get those up, we might be able to find out that way. That would be a more efficient use of our time. That's All true. right. I will. Then yeah, let's look. So we're gonna go look for the comms. I I think it's easy enough to find the comms room. Now let's just get a conflict roll as to whether you can get the communications up and running, without any issues. By all means, we'll try again, LT. I don't get paid enough for this. <laughs> hey. hey, success, but one die left. Okay. Well um. With that success, you're able to get the communications up and running. And what do you do next? I... Oh, yeah, let me test this real quick. Hey, Cyrus, are you fucking around upstairs? Are you still alive? Uh, yeah, Cyrus, you can probably hear it, <laughs> but you probably have to get to a communications. You know, you get to like a, a, a telephone or a board that you can communicate back with. So if you'd like to try to communicate with them, Please give me a conflict roll to try to find a board. <laughs> Serge, don't make me roll things. Roll things. <laughs> it's a one. <laughs> yes. Let I me roll. Hear. Perfection. Okay, I got a six. God damn it. <laughs> so That's even better. You go into the communication room and there's a couple of them in the corner kind of chilling out and there's a you know uh, we'll say it's like a wall unit that you can walk up to but they're right there and this is technically you're out of dice so this is technically the end of the scene uh -huh. so I think that as you go to move towards the communication they kind of notice you the red eyes go at you and I think they start chasing after you god damn it and not again <laughs> we'll blow out another candle there are eight left now 
and we will prepare for our new scene as we have before. These things are true. The world is dark. We are, we are alive. alive. One, two, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven eight now. Truths. Seven more truths, excuse me, yeah. So go ahead and let's make some truths. Um, certainly truths that help Cyrus in this moment as they're chasing them down will help, Please. but uh, they can be anything you want. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, there's a one of those large, uh, high-quality fire extinguishers, like right in the hallway, right next to that comms room. Uh, all right, we're gonna discover our truths, and then we'll take a quick bio break. Uh, so, I'm sorry. Once again, what, what was it, Adrian? Uh, a nice military-grade fire extinguisher, easy to use. Is within reach of uh, Cyrus, I assume, right? Yeah, right where they are now. Yes. Gotcha. Bless. Another truth. Hmm. Uh... I'll say um, the ones that are chasing you are the mutated ones. Mm. They have extra legs to move even faster and climb the walls Rest. and stuff. Extra mouths, too. Thanks, Serge. <laughs> <laughs> Eli, any truths? Um, hmm. We're in a room, right? Right now? The two of you yeah. are in a room, yes. Yeah. Contra. And we still have our, our little navigator boy, right? Yep. Um, we, yeah, after we get the comms up and we relay all of that, um, we start to hear more scattering coming closer to us. Okay, like so... Like we, like, tripped an alarm or something like that. I don't know. So what is the truth, then, that you're able to hear that uh, Cyrus is in trouble, or...? Uh, we hear that we're not alone here. In the room? Um, yeah, in the room? Within, near enough, I think, okay. is the way that Eli's going. That yeah. we can hear them coming from somewhere. In the like shot. Yeah, like, us communicating tripped off our location. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, their navigator has an accurate map of the ship. Beautiful. <laughs> Very smart. Three more. Uh, three? Three more is what we need, yeah. Did I miss one? Uh, extinguisher, skittering, navigator, and uh, the ones chasing your mutants. Yeah, one of them is oh, the, the, they are mutated them. ones. Yeah. Um, um, as we get closer to shore, the density of creatures in the water is getting thicker. So it's okay. taking a little bit more time to get there. Interesting. Density of dead creatures slows the ship. There's got to be a lot of like dead whales and stuff because this yeah. is an aircraft carrier. So sad. Maybe it's even boats too. Like there's actual yeah. like boats that it's crushing and hitting. And mm -hmm. if you're going to say that, then I'm going to add that the hull of the ship is being uh, uh, affected by the constant ramming of other ships. So I'm going to say that there is flooding happening. Oh, flooding gosh. happening on lower decks. One more truth. I got one. Go ahead. Uh, from that corner under where the um, that comes system is for uh, our dear friend, I was going to say Curly, and I know that's not right. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I do have curly hair. It's close enough. Um, Cyrus. <laughs> start to, both start with C. Um, uh, before they had, like, all of the creatures turned their attention to you, you heard a loud, like, crunch. Mm. From under the device. Gross. From under the device. Okay. Almost as if they were chewing something. Uh, device. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, we have our truths. Um, I think I can clarify that. Um, 
in that moment, right before they noticed you, Allegra, you could see that these things were in the room because they were munching on a body of one of the other sailors, and they completely oh. eat the entire thing, bones and all. There's almost nothing left when they finally notice you and give chase. Oh, so, man. with eight dice, let's see if you can get out of this mess. With eight. Uh, uh, as we established with the truth, there is a military grade fire extinguisher by you. Yeah, I'm gonna grab that fire extinguisher. And oh, so we're gonna take a bio break. Oh, oh yes, yes. I'm, so, I'm so sorry. So we'll take a quick uh, five minute bio break. We will be right back with 10 candles, guys. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Here we go.
And here we are back <laughs> after Once our again. bio break. We left with Cyrus basically making a big splash up on the top deck and waking up all of those things that were up there, all of them, and uh, all of the Clementines. And they are now down on the next floor, as are you guys. Cyrus walked into a room to try to communicate with the others and saw a couple of them eating uh, a whole uh, one of the former members of the crew. And now they have set their sights and their attention on Cyrus. Cyrus, you have eight dice left. What are you doing? Fighting, fleeing, or something else? What's the plan? I think you are muted. Indeed, I was. Uh, the goofy persona that Cyrus has been putting forward is evaporating quickly as they are getting extremely tired. Uh, and they're just going to start running. They're going to grab the fire extinguisher off the wall as they go and just, like, book. Okay. Is the goal to just get away or is the goal to fight or what? The goal is to get away, um, okay. but to have, have a backup if they, if they have to fight. Okay, uh, go ahead and make the conflict roll. I will roll myself. We got six dice, gang. <laughs> okay, with so no stupid. successes. Uh, I don't have any successes either, so I don't have complete narrative control. Um, these things are able to keep pace with you no matter where you go. They are right behind. What happens next? Um, I'll then, say we've got I, I'll say that now because you failed the next roll will be a dire conflict meaning if you don't succeed on that or if somebody doesn't succeed on that there will be dire consequences huh. um, now think? the other what two of you, you are trying <laughs> to communicate like the other two of you are trying to communicate with Cyrus uh, you could tell them where to go you could tell you could maybe assist in some way or Cyrus can just Stand and fight? What's the plan? Can we have... Are there... Hmm, would there be camera... Were, could we see cameras here in this room? I think you would have seen it in the helm, but I don't yeah. think you're on the helm anymore. Okay. It harpy. So, so we, did, we didn't get a positive confirmation through the thing, so I think I'll test again, and, and maybe that'll pull their attention. <laughs> or tell, okay. them, tell them where to meet us. Oh, fine. We'll take this seriously. <laughs> I'm not taking this seriously. Because we're all going to die. Oh, my God. 
All right, so you are yelling out to them. I, I don't think that necessarily requires a roll. Um, so Lord yeah, if it, their attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah attention. that's fair. That's fair. This is dire, so you do not want to completely Success. fail on this. Ooh, hello, si like whatever. What what is your rank, Cyrus? Um, if um, you can hear this, come down to the closet where the thing that you heard links, please. Just in case they can understand English. <laughs> I'm trying. A six and a one. All right. So one Five less nice. dice, but that is a success. And uh, narrate for me, uh, Adrian, narrate for me how Cyrus gets to you guys. So I think there's like, you, you grab the fire extinguisher and book it, but you mentioned being tired. So I'm imagining Cyrus at one point trying to duck and hide. So like, as soon as you do that, like you just hear the, the skittering of the creatures again. And like, as soon as you hear that, Cyrus... What is your rank? Um, you, the, the creature's just... And then, as that ends, they run back towards the comms room where the sound came through. And it gives you just enough time to get to your allies. So you are all back together again with one new person as well. Have we named this person? Can we give no, a name? We didn't. This is Jeff. Jeff. Uh... <laughs> Jeff, the, uh, the navigator, the navigator, right, right. <laughs> so, with you all in the room together, what's what's the plan? Jeff here has located the source of our problem, so we need to head to these set of cables, get them reestablished, and hopefully, we'll be able to arm the bomb. Great. Good. Let's go. Yeah. Sure. Good. Right. I'm gonna have Jeff lead the way. Okay, <laughs> Jeff is an NPC and cannot roll, but so we'll say the next best is Eli. So Eli, yeah. why don't you roll to see if you guys can get to the communications room? But if Eli like fails, got, just know it's Jeff failing. Jeff killed. He's got a little. He's got his little map up and all of that. He's holding he's it, is that directing you, know. you. One success, but we lost another can uh, dice. Damn it, Jeff. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I have a success. So what happens is, if a conflict is successful, but the GM rolls an equal number or more of sixes, which I have, mm -hmm. um, I win the narration right. However, the active player may choose to seize the narration. Okay. If you do this, uh, we automatically darken a candle, uh, but you're able to narrate getting to that room. Okay. Would you like to do that? Sure. Okay. okay. Another... Another candle blows out. Uh, we now have seven candles, but you're, could you narrate for me getting to the room? Um, yeah, so we got our little adventurer, Jeff, in front of us, and he's leading us through some tunnels, or like some, uh, like, what is Maintenance it? Maintenance tunnels. Maintenance tunnels yeah. and stuff like that. It's like something that keeps us off guard. Um, we had, um, probably a run-in with with a, a pack of them but managed to distract them and get back and you know that's what we're doing yeah. at this point we're, we're chucking stuff and trying to not engage as much as possible right right um but then we slowly but eventually meet to the door we need to go you're in this room and i would imagine like you know you see these cables that have been just like torn maybe one of these creatures you know t tore at this cable mm -hmm. and now there's kind of sparks uh, uh uh sparking but everything that is needed to fix it is in this room um we have a new scene though so we are going to define uh our truths again these things are true the world is dark we are alive we are alive, we are alive. okay we need six truths. Jeff is having a tough time. Jeff is looking sickly. Jeff is looking sickly. Could we define that further as like Jeff is on his last leg? Like Jeff is. Is Jeff possessed by a creature? I think I think hey, Jeff he got I a wound. Think Jeff is in a wound, like an has an infected wound that may or may not 
lead to... So let's say this. Jeff is not going to survive past so the scene. Yeah. Jeff is Jeff is not going to survive past this scene. Jeff be dead. Whether you guys would like to sacrifice him in some way is up to you. Okay, <laughs> Jeff be dead. Cool. If Jeff is Jeff is going to die by the end of this scene. Uh, what else? Six more. Uh, it's a lot of cables that need to be fixed. Mm. Okay. It's not just like one cable that needs to be fixed. It's like four or five. Which takes time, so it's yeah, gonna, maybe it's time gonna, consuming. Yeah, it's a time-consuming task, which will eat up most of the hour you have left before the ship makes its port. Um, I like that. I think the, I think that all added truth, which is that the they have successfully taken out the electrical room above that had lit some stuff so you're back into darkness lights go out again so maybe still have a flashlight <laughs> here's a here's a here's a fun truth um <clears throat> the way those cables were destroyed um it was it's covered in um a blood bile that looks like it is burned through the cabling mm. Acid. Okay, so that's how they were severed. Um, <clears throat> there is a lot of electrical tape in here, though. <laughs> Tons of electrical tape. Electrical tape and gumption. <laughs> okay, MacGyver. <laughs> one, one more truth is needed. I mean, it could be something useful, like there is a flashlight in this room. Yes, there are glow sticks. and Glow sticks, okay, yeah, even glow. better. There's in a, a, an emergency kit. We'll say a box of glow sticks. Buy the glow sticks. All right. So with these truths established and seven dice left, I'll add one to my pool. What's the plan? Start well, a pageant, I guess. Yeah. Is this something that you can maybe teach to others so that we can maybe help the task along? Or this is like a, a need to know kind of situation? Uh, yeah, I can probably teach you. Okay. I'd like to learn how to help patch these cables so that we can move twice as fast. LT, why does need to know matter when we're all gonna die anyway? Listen, I don't, we don't have time for this. You know? Okay, I'm just. Okay, so you can make. <laughs> Either LT <laughs> hasn't said your name. <laughs> <laughs> Either Allegra can make a conflict roll to try to teach Eli's character, or Eli's character can make a roll to fix the cabling, and you can use your hope die. My so darling, you have technically you eight so die. Much better than me. <laughs> that might be the the situation. Okay, so we'll say that uh, Cyrus teaches the lieutenant how to do it. You have eight die to try and get a success. <laughs> well, five sort of successes on, on, on hope dies, right? Die on hope dies, though. Yes. Okay, cool. Then I have one success from hope, but we lost the dice. Okay. okay. I have a success with one six. If you'd like, you can try to seize narrative control, but we would end this scene and move on to six candles. What, what do we say, friends? I do say need... do it. I say fucking do Let, it. Fuck it, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Another candle blows out. We now have six die uh, left. Uh, narrate for me what happens. How are you able to fix these cables? Um. Yeah, I, I'm just sitting next to Cyrus. They show me how to do it. I start patching. It's a little learning curve situation mm -hmm. but I eventually finally get one so now I understand the process and now I'm slowly helping it so by the time um, anything else happens uh, we have at least established uh, the cables connections you establish the connection it seems like it's uh, uh, you know stable that there is power going through 
when you finish, you turn around, kind of celebrating with each other, and you see that Jeff the Navigator has slumped expired. over and expired, not able to celebrate with you. He's got these a things, a zombie. <laughs> these things are true. The world is dark. We are still alive. alive. That was so much less, so much less excitement than the last time. Uh, okay, well, we've got um, five truths left to define for the new scene. What's one of them? Jeff is absolutely going to reanimate. Okay, I'm so glad you said that because I was going to say it. Uh. Has we made a little ring of glow sticks at the door so none of the monsters will come in. Are we salting door? Basically. Uh, do you want to burn a truth on that? I feel like that's easy enough to do. Don't burn a truth on that. Yeah, I think that's easy well, enough to do. If we burn a truth on it, if we fail enough times, they don't suddenly come through the door. That is true. That that's is true. true. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm claiming that as a truth. Okay. Cool. I'm going to uh, make everything slightly worse for us again, because I just love doing that. Hey, you know that thing that burned through the cables? Mm -hmm. We just finished repairing everything and woke it up. It's in this room. Okay, gotcha. Mm. Gotcha. <laughs> this boy is here. Not only is there a reanimated Jeff, but also there's one of these things in the room. Okay. There we go. Two more truths. Uh... There's a service hatch that we can um, use to get to another floor. Love it. Makes sense. One more. Um, the time we have left is short, so we gotta hurry. Okay. Um, how can we define this as a better truth? Yeah. Um, down to the wire, but like, how do we? We're it's either. We'll say it again. We're filling with water since you established the hole and taken damage. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. We're actively sinking. So, actively sinking, but I think just like the lower level you're going to go to has water in it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Water. The water yes. level. Yes, the water level. Everyone hates water the water, water level. level. <laughs> <laughs> water on this level. Honestly, I'm sad the Universal doesn't do the Water World show anymore. It kind of slaps. Oh, shut the fuck up. Don't you tell me that they canceled fucking Water World. I think they did. I don't you fucking tell me that. Like, they canceled it because it's, of the fucking route. Yeah, it's have, too old of a franchise as well. We They're don't have time do... to talk about this right now. We'll talk what? about it later. Yeah. Oh, okay, anyway. We, we, got, to, we got to focus because we'll have these guys to everyone. <laughs> okay, we've established our truths. With six die left, what's the move? I, I will, I'll start us off this time. So I think that, like, while they were working, I wasn't doing shit because I was watching the thing wake up. Oh. <laughs> and I was just kind of like, oh, how do I deal with this? Because if I say anything, I'm going to wake it up. But if I don't do anything, it's going to be bad. So I am going to, like, slowly approach it. Like, it took me a while to come to this conclusion, which is why last scene I did nothing. <laughs> right? I'm gonna go up and take that one shell of the fucking shotgun and shoot it. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay, make that attack. If we roll a one, by the way, I can use my vice, because I definitely hesitated. <laughs> oh, yeah, good point. Yeah. Hell uh, yeah. I Hell fail, yeah. But I mm -hmm. rolled a one, so I'm gonna burn hesitant. Yes. Try to get, make that a six. So you, you already described how you were waiting this whole time to make this move. <laughs> click, click. Oh. Another one? Yep. Oh. <laughs> she rolled another one. I can't believe it. Oh. Love it. Let me let me roll just to see. Yep, I got a I got a success. Yep. Uh, Here we go. I think you go to fire, but yeah, maybe maybe it just kind of clicks and it doesn't go, and you're like, oh shit, it's 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 a dud. You got a racket. <laughs> the and the thing's it. red eyes, you know, kind of shoot open. I did sharpening school, not close to CQC. 
and it just kind of begins to get up and move, and you all quickly become aware that there's something in this room. It's now or never. What are you doing? This thing is about to pounce. Probably on Eustace. Uh, let's go. Let's move. Um, I'm going to fire off shots at this creature in hopes that it will be coverage for the others to head towards the service hatch. So I'm going to tell them service hatch over there and then start pew pew pewing. Pew pew pew. Make your rolls. <laughs> Hell yeah. Two successes. Oh, I have two successes. Oh, oh fuck. Not again. Now, I will have narrative control unless you want to burn through this scene and burn a candle. We can't burn another candle. We can, we can burn this. I mean, we absolutely can. Fine. Fuck it. We're going to burn another candle. Why, no, why am I the only one burning yeah. candles here? I'm the only one. Because you and Serge are the only ones that roll well. Eli, candle burning. Uh, uh, Jules starts firing and um, you are able to cover, go ahead and narrate as how you guys get out of this situation. So yeah, I'm going to yell for like, go hit the service hatch. Are you guys doing anything? Or are you just going straight there? I will do whatever you are telling me to what do. What happened to Jeff? He did. Jeff is dead on the ground. But he for has now. not. Okay, for now. Okay, Jeff is not my concern. So yeah, so I pop Jeff. fire until everybody gets down fuck jeff and then i'll try to go down and maybe it's like very oh man um how many clip should i waste all my bullets here you used at least one i think Save one, I, used, please. I used one bullet out of six that we established yeah so then i'll pop off three bullets okay is three yeah. enough to kill one of these things i ooh, yes Sure. Maybe I maybe I've maybe um, we establish Ooh, yeah. its weak spots. Okay, um, which would be like center of the chest, or maybe at like the at the neck. Gotcha. And then I fall the through the hatch. Sack. Yeah, a, a bio sack. The bile sack. Oh, the, the bile the sack. Oh yeah, yeah. It like yeah, it like ooh, like I hit that pocket and it like bursts and it like then you you realize that even though they're on the inside that can hold that acid, their skin is not capable yeah. of that so it ends up corroding the outside of it love it love it so as it's kind I... of you dive down so as it's kind of dying in its own bile you you make it out <laughs> these things are true the world is dark we, we are, are alive. alive so we now have four truths that we must establish for the next scene um any ideas you we probably didn't. all land in, in you know, like, uh, uh, ankle deep of water. Yeah. If we set off the nuclear bomb any closer to the coast, it's going to affect the people living there. Ooh, I like that. I like that. It's now or never. Now or never. We never got the map from Jeff Ooh, on our way out. Not. Never got the map. You don't really know where you're going at this point more adrian any ideas yeah you have to activate the uh the missile from the bridge because that's where the captain would be oh mm. captain my captain wait from the bridge i'll add one okay which is if you can't get to the helm you can activate it manually on the warhead itself just so that there is a secondary option of being able to complete our this test. mission. Yeah. Beautiful. Activate manually at the warhead. Okay. So you all land into ankle deep water. You can see some of the of the, the bulkheads have, have popped off and there's water seeping in. You know I'm that you have minutes before you are too close to land and any survivors that could be there might be affected by the radiation, what's the move? I'm going to crack some glow sticks first, because this is definitely a place for us to have glow sticks. Um, LT, I got a thought. Hmm. Uh, I can, um, I can go down to the engine. I can, I can knock it out. 
That way, okay. if we're a little slower, we're not r- irradiating everyone in Los Angeles. Okay. Then you want us to go to the helm? Well, I mean, I'm, I mean, you guys can go to the go to the place where we need to set off the nuke. But I think if we get any closer, we're gonna fuck up a lot of people on the western coast. So, exactly. if we're just looking for one button upstairs, it might be better if I assist um, our dear mechanic friend on uh, demolishing the engine. Uh-huh. Two people will make it go much faster. Okay. Can I? Uh... Can I use your gun? I pass you my shotgun. This is empty. This is useless to me. I, it is not empty. Um, I, it just clicked because I oh, did not cop right. it. <laughs> oh, I mean, if we got a rifle, then you'll take the rifle. I'll take the rifle for sure. Okay. Cool. Uh, I do guess you I'll want give an you extra weapon. bashing weapon. It's this you like might. floaty mop handle that has some rusty scissors. I think you might need it more than I do. I take the fucking fire extinguisher. Yeah, I take the fire here, extinguisher fire that's hanging off your belt. <laughs> the only reason my pants are falling down is because I'm wearing full coveralls. <laughs> as far as I know, comms are still up and running. You run into trouble. Relay it in any way you can. Aye, aye. Uh, cool. You same. A nod. I'm going to head towards the uh, the helm, I guess, right? Okay. Yeah. So, with five die between the three of you, who would like to roll first? Uh, Eli, you want to roll to try to get to the helm first, or do the two of you want to roll to try to get to the war uh, the warhead first? If, well, the, if the engine, the I mean. Engine, yeah. I, and that's time-based, I think we should do that first. Yeah, you guys go first. Okay. With five Since- dice... See what you can do. <laughs> I got a, I got an Allegra. You okay. go, you go. This is that's better. Um, so I'm imagining like both, uh, uh, both, uh, Christ, not Christ. <laughs> so bad, Cyrus. <laughs> I'm calling <laughs> Curtis this time. <laughs> Uh, yes, you know I, what? No, I am going to call him Chris. <laughs> so we're looking at each other, and it's just like, who the fuck's going to go? Fine. <laughs> Fine, because mm-hmm. I burned hesitant. I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> and uh, see how this goes. <laughs> it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> okay, uh, any no, ones? No, no ones. Nothing. No ones. All right. Let me roll mine. I've got five dice here to play with. <sighs> Ooh, I don't roll any sixes, so we kind of have to decide narratively what happens. I think, you know, there's water here, you're being delayed, and I think as you go lower, like, the water gets higher and higher. I think yeah. maybe once you get down to the engine room, it's, like, probably neck height, even. Mm-hmm. <sighs> and you're just having a hard time traversing, so we'll say that you, you haven't, let's see. It's taking longer than we want it to take. Yes, I think that's fair enough. Yeah. Um, Eli, why don't you roll for the lieutenant to see if they can get to the helm? Put that open there. I have one success and one a loss of dice. Okay. I have two successes against yours, so I have narrative control. Okay. I think the simplest thing that happens is you basically get to the floor just above the top deck and they are everywhere um they have you know found shelter and you're going to have to try to sneak past them to get to the helm uh with four dice left see if you can do that Three successes. Dude, yes! yes! Excellent. I have no successes, so you are going to be able to do that. Why don't you narrate for us how you get to the helm? God, fucking Jules is sweating bullets at this point. <laughs> fucking like that creep hole, like pressed up against walls and stuff like that. Just hope and praying, like trying to keep their breath, like from being too loud and just, you know, 
it's just a, a thought process in their head going over and over as long as they get to the helm i'm safe as long as they get to the helm i'm safe yeah. uh until they finally realize that they're like right outside the hel helm door yeah. after navigating yeah. and traversing all through that and they kind of take like a ragged breath and go inside okay <laughs> lock themselves Great. in there um allegra and adrian let's have you guys roll to see if you can get any closer to the engine room i'll do it this time sure 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 four dice two successes oh very good no successes on my part um narrate how you finally reach the engine room yeah so the water is creeping up and the the ceilings are pretty high but the water is creeping up so i think at one point i i suggest that we float and get up to the point where we can grab a couple of the pipes running along the ceiling and just pull ourselves along rather than trying to swim. Great. You make it into the engine room, which is one of the largest rooms, I would assume, on the ship. Massive. Um, there is uh, probably a, a bilge pump or something that is trying to keep out as much of the water as possible, but I would assume much of the engine is already underwater, which makes your job a little bit easier. Uh, who would like to go first, Eli or the other team? Who would you like to try to stop the engine or? Can I use my moment? Absolutely. Yeah. You are going to make a conflict roll. So you're going to roll with your dice and you want to succeed. God damn it. All right. <laughs> uh, Cyrus swings themselves into the room, grabs onto a pipe that'll keep them a little above water and takes out the rifle and aims and says, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Got a success. <laughs> awesome, amazing. You will gain a hope die. So you oh. will always have one extra die and narrate for me what, what happens. Uh, yeah, so they, uh, they, they pull themselves up on this pipe and they're apologizing to the engine. I'll rebuild you later, I promise. And they pull and they, they know exactly the spot that they need to, to take the shot. And they just rip through the engine yeah, and it and, sputters. And it's already kind of half working because of the, the flooding. Your shot just kind of takes it over the edge and it, and it stops. And I think all over the ship shudders, probably the power going out everywhere mm -hmm. uh, where there was power. Uh, the emergency kicks back on. There's just enough to use to be able to successfully blow the warhead but you know at least when it blows it will not be on the shores um what's left i think is to get to that electrical room that you had worked so hard to get to and s do whatever electrical magic you need to do so that the helm can speak to the warhead and it can be fired yeah and that's up another stair right yeah, we'll say it's a floor or two, but um, okay. the two of you will need to roll to see if you can get there. I got it. Go for All it. All right. Plus, get two successes. Excellent. I, I did have one success, but that's not going to be your two successes. Oh, yeah. Sure enough, you get there, you get into the room, and I think... I think that... It's worth doing at least a conflict roll to see if you can successfully connect the two. Yeah. Uh, let's ask someone to do that. I still have two of my cards, leg. If you'd like me to go again. You still have two of your cards. I, I have like three of my cards left. Oh shit! Go off. Oh, okay. You don't have to be rude. <laughs> do it. Two successes. Ooh, you're amazing. Amazing. <laughs> and a one. Uh, and a one. Did you say two successes and a one? No, two successes, two no successes. ones. <gasps> um, no ones. So I, I literally am just like, hey, is this switch supposed to be on? And I flip it and it God, No, that's the fucking problem. <laughs> I thought you were a professional. It's the been warhead... a rough couple of days, dude. <laughs> the warhead is armed. We have five candles left and you still have some dice. So we need to extend our narrative in a way that makes sense as to why the story is continuing. Um, maybe, Eli, if you'd like to make a roll to see if you can completely make sense of 
how to operate the warhead as you have never fired one before. Sure. No successes. Okay. Let's let me roll. No successes on my part. You're having difficulty. Yeah, I'm again pre pressing buttons, trying no. to see what works. But the engine has stopped by now, right? Engine has stopped. Okay, so at least we're waiting here. Okay. Uh, can I intercom up to to Jules? Sure. Why isn't it working? I don't. What button am I supposed to push? There's like a bunch of buttons here, like. There's like a yellow one, and then there's a blue one next to it. Don't push either of those. Um, uh, yeah, it's gonna be easier if we can see it. Um, can, can you, you just, just turn the ship? The to... Can I turn the ship? Yeah, can you just like turn the rudders so that we're like not floating towards shore? Okay. Alternatively, there should be a giant glass case with a key next to it that you turn to arm the bomb. Oh because yeah, that too. Just launch those. It's the big imposing one. <laughs> Well, it's, it's fucking dark in here, and I cannot see. Hey, hey can I roll the conflict one for this one? Sure. To see if it's actually what I'm describing? Yeah, yeah, sure. Is that even real? Is that even true? That was... God damn it, no. No successes. I Run think, years. let's see, let's see if I can get a success here. Um, so I don't get a success, but I think <laughs> that, um, and maybe we can agree on this, maybe it's that we were wrong about the helm being where you launch the nuke. Maybe there's like a, uh, not a battle station, but like a, a war room? yeah, like a, like, a, like I think of in, when you're in like submarines, there's like a, almost like a communications room or something like yeah. that, that, that mm -hmm. that's probably what has, cause I like the idea of this red button, you know, in the glass yeah. case. So maybe that's what it is, is that we have to make our way to that room. Cyrus, I'm not seeing what you're describing on any of these panels. I don't think it's up here. Okay, well, maybe you're in the wrong place. Maybe we got confused. Well, where maybe would I be? Me, uh. There's the comms room. <laughs> Comm station. Try there. Okay, fuck. Okay. We'll meet you there. there. Okay. Okay. Cool. Let's get Eli. Let's get that <laughs> conflict roll to see if you can find your way. <laughs> No successes, no loss of dice. Okay. You are finding yourself lost on the ship as you start to make your way down. The two of you, let's get a roll from you guys to see if you're able to have any success. Swim. Swim your way up. I'll, I have an extra die. I'll do it. Dear friend. <laughs> That's no successes in a one. Ah. Okay. Three dice, friends. Let me make a roll real quick, see if I can oppose you. Nope, I am not able to. Um, the three of you are now lost in the ship without a map, without, uh, you know, now with flooding and now with these creatures, you're going in places you've never been before on the ship and you're having a hard time finding this room. Uh, with one die left, what, what's the plan? No, we only have one die left? Well, you have, I think you've burned most of them, right? Am I wrong? And we've got three, I think. Oh, we have three, because I just yeah. rolled okay. four in my hope, so I, we have so three. We have two left. <laughs> um, are you on your right? I'm sorry, two. Did you say two, Serge? Yeah, we have two. You have two left. Yes, uh, that's correct. Not, my not bad. including so the hope yeah. die. Okay, so we have two dice left. Cool. So what are we doing? We're gonna still still looking. You're basically okay. uh, you basically need to find some new way of. Uh, and I'm gonna roll Getting. to try to find find the way. Okay. No successes. Okay, I do have a success. <laughs> <laughs> I think all this walking around is making a lot of noise, and these things are getting smarter every time they interact with you. And I think that what you begin to realize is you haven't interacted with them in a moment, not because they haven't seen you, but because they've gotten smart and they've laid some traps. Oh, shit. And I think you all immediately become aware in your own moments on the different parts of the ship that you are being followed. Um, you hear that skittering and you know that they're around the corner somewhere. 
So it's a matter of either continuing to find this place or to hide. This comms room or hide. Or fight. Some of you still have your traits and your moments and maybe even your brinks. I am... Well, I would like to look for another one of those fucking maintenance uh, uh, patches. Spots that we can just duck into. So I rolled a five and a one. However, okay. I am a lucky motherfucker. Yeah. We're going to burn we back. We that one. This is too much. No, it's only one. Sorry. So, so it didn't work. No, no, no. I see. I see. True. Fun. Oh, and it's yes. Like Blood. That's amazing. Blast. You are lucky. Did turn wow. the one to six. So I think like <laughs> I went to a door, went mother, and then like I try another door like right next to it, and it's like all right stairs. How the oh, fuck? Okay. I just believe me. I'm good at what I do. <laughs> what is it that you do? You checked like salt levels. I am a doctor. <laughs> I'm a doctor, damn it. <laughs> I'm a doctor. I am absolutely going to hide. Um, well, this is all happening. I don't. You have one. You have your hope die, and you have one. Hope die and one. No successes. Okay. I do not hide. Uh, I have a success, <laughs> I think. and I think that one of them leaps out and you are not able to get to a hiding spot, and it's now you and one of these things kind of facing you down, moving towards you. What are you doing? Uh, running the opposite direction. Okay, you start running the opposite direction. Give me another roll. This, I will say that this is a dire circumstance. Ah! Uh, part of the cards, part of the cards. Part of the ship, part of the group, part of the group. Oh, group. successes! <laughs> No successes. no successes and no zeros. No ones, no, so I can't fucking burn no anything. Hmm. Okay. Fuck. Um. Hmm. If a failure could result in lethal or ruinous consequences for the characters involved, it's a dire conflict, which is what I'm establishing it as. Um. I'm gonna say that because it's unsuccessful, and I, I actually, I'm rolling really well today. I rolled another success. God damn it, Sergio. <laughs> this, this. This ends the scene as a candle is darkened. Um, you can choose to sacrifice yourself uh, in a way that heroically assists your fellow survivors. Um, moving forward, the player may then roll their hope die as if it were there. So you can basically hand off your hope die right now okay. if you choose to be a martyr. No, there's nothing to martyr here. <laughs> it's just me and one. <laughs> no, I don't I want to... I'll martyr next time and fight. <laughs> yeah. Well, the next time will be a different game because you are going to die. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, too bad, you're dead. Too bad, you're dead. You try to run, and in, in before you've been fast, but these things are smart, and when you turn a corner, they've blocked the hallway with some debris or something, and you've got nowhere to go. Not Debris. And the two of you... <laughs> <laughs> Not Debris. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'll pop, I'll pop Jewel, off blood uh, everywhere. Uh, Jules is gone. Cyrus and Eustace, uh, Eustace, Eustace you can hear the gun, <laughs> the final couple of gunshots and the scream. And there's a good chance that Jules is no more. I think they made it. That's an optimistic outlook for you. Another you candle. Remember. They would like out. <laughs> we now have four candles. So, as before, these things were, are true. The world is dark. Two of us are alive. Exactly. Oh, and we are alive. Sorry. <laughs> you now Forgot. have four truths to establish. Eli, you're still part of the game, so you're going to include. Oh. You can, three, including you know, you we can, are alive. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, uh, it would be three, though, because we've only got four dice, right? You have four dice, so correct. Yes, thank you. Um, we've stopped moving, so that's good. Right. It's not a truth, that's just a fact. <laughs> um, so... 
No, it's dumb. I'm not gonna say that. Do it. There's no <laughs> dumb things in here. I was gonna say they're trying to make oars to row. It's pretty dumb. <laughs> well, I think you're maybe touching on something good, which is maybe they are trying to find a way to the shore. Um, yeah. I think I, we could... maybe some of them are jumping off the side and trying to glide their way closer. We have established that there's also like other boats that are kind of like aimlessly floating oh, around. Yes, they could be using those as hopping to the shore. So yeah, some are trying to escape and get to shore. And um, I think that if, yeah, if you don't successfully set off the nuke, then they will make it. Anyone, um, Adrian, any ideas? We are currently being chased. Okay. <laughs> currently being chased. Lie a truth to maybe help your allies. Mm. Or hurt. No, I want to. <laughs> I love that. Are you guys still underwater? No, we're yeah, up, we're, up, up, we're we were up on the same level. We were just trying to find the comms room. Hmm. I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. Hmm. If anyone else has ones, you can always just use that one. We have uh, stopped next to the armory, which is mostly empty, but not all the way empty. Okay. Close to the armory, we'll say. All right, so with these truths established, you guys now realize these things are not just uh, close, but they are chasing you. What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to take that smoke, e smoke extinguisher. The fire and, extinguisher? Yeah, the what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take my fire ex like exhalator. No, um, uh, and uh, my moment is I will find hope when I use my tools in unexpected ways to defend us. So I'm just gonna point it backwards and make a fucking smoke screen. Amazing! Oh, oh, rad. Love that idea. Nice. Yeah. Got a six. <sighs> got a six, and and should you roll any ones in this scene, you can re-roll it. But no that one. is a success. Uh, narrate for me how what happens. Just there is a uh, I uh, I just go go and then I turn it back, shake it, try to trigger it once it doesn't work. I pull the tap out <laughs> <laughs> and then I and then just start backing away and it distracts them just long enough because you start hearing this awful alien hacking sound as they yeah. are starting to <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you have a hope die now. So all yes, of you have I... successfully gained a, a hope die. That's amazing. Um, I think I have to roll against you, though. I think I forgot to do that. I rolled three successes. Oh, ball <laughs> luck. So I'm going to say that you do do all of that, but <laughs> one of them uh, leaps out from the smoke and gives continues to give chase. You are no closer to being safe. So hmm. what's happening next? Should we roll to escape, dear Sergio? Probably. That makes sense. Yeah. Let's escape. Let's One start. of you will roll. Would you like to roll or would you like me to roll? I'll do it. Why not? You did a cool thing. I'll do a less cool thing. <laughs> <coughs> we still have four, yeah? Plus my hope die. Four plus the hope die. Well, I did get a one and no successes. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I did get one success. Hmm. I think that it is going to slash at the person that was closest, which is probably uh, Eustace. So Eustace, you you take like a a big slash to your back. You're gonna be slowed probably uh, dying, maybe even infected by whatever they are doing. Um, you are no closer, though, to finding an escape. It seems to continue to manage to get on you guys. Wait, is Eustace uh, dead? Eustace is not dead. Yeah, Eustace is, dead. is alive, but is very, very quickly losing strength. Cool. Uh -huh. So I'll roll to try to find <laughs> a way to get us to the, the room safely. All right. 
I rolled yeah. two successes. Awesome. I only rolled one success. I'm going to use my brink. Uh, you gave me a brink. Uh, the, the GM is able to use their brink. The brink is that uh, you saw them eat the crew whole, so they seem to eat everything. Uh, I, I'll say that what you see is that the creature that's chasing you has uh, Jules's leg in its mouth, and he kind of finishes gulping them down. I'm going to re-roll my die. See if I can get more than two. Damn, and I don't. Unfortunately, yes. I don't. So, I burned that brink for nothing, unfortunately. You guys are able to get away. Narrate for me, uh, Adrian, what happens? Just, I think, um, like, it hits me, and I see that it decides to, like, fucking taunt me by chewing on Jules's leg. And I'm just like, motherfucker. And I take the... The um the uh the extinguisher and just bash it in the head and run. Nice, <laughs> nice. Uh, you find yourselves in a new room. You know that your options are get to this calm room or set the warhead off manually. You have moments before they probably find you again. What's what you doing? Split up. You go one way, I go the other. Maybe one of us gets there. Sounds like a plan. Here, and I'll pass the, the mop stick. I take the knife off the mop stick and put the knife on my my gun. Right. Yeah, oh, you got a bayonet <laughs> now. All right, all right, all right. Uh, well, it, I can I'm see not why I'm the pleasure. officer. <laughs> not going to say it was a pleasure because this mostly sucked. Um, <laughs> a weird old dude, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not mad about up. having to save the world with you, I guess. So, for Jules. For Jules. Where, which room are you going to? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll you first. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you wanna do you wanna do it manually? Or, I I feel like you would. You should probably go to where the button is. You seem to know more about the button than I did earlier. So you you, you should do the button. That's what our characters discuss. Yeah. So yeah. you go down to activate it. Oh, manually. that was a good character. <laughs> <laughs> that no, that I, was I, that I, awkward moment where you both leave and you're going the same direction. <laughs> so uh, you start heading off to the manual thing. I look like I'm going to go and hit the button, and then I decide I'm going to follow you anyway. Ugh. This is Interesting. why. Okay. Um, you guys start heading in, in a direction. Go ahead and uh, somebody roll for me to see if you can find this damn... It's the calm room, right? Yeah. 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 All right, I'll roll it. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, if you've got a cat, I can roll it. It's fine. Yes, please roll it. Okay. <laughs> She's being a menace. Hello. Oh. Uh, nothing. Nothing for me either. So, search. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Do I use the? Do I use my brink now? Sure. I mean, it would g give you the chance to re-roll and maybe give you a better chance of finding this room finally. Sure. I think I'm going to do that. Um, okay, so... So um, I'm going to read my brink, yeah. and then I'll describe what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, my brink um, from uh, Eli is, I've seen you throw a coworker in the way to save yourself. <gasps> <laughs> that was so also I... my brink for Eli, which I think is very funny. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> So I'm going Sacrifice. to what you see Eustace doing, like, because also I've seen you not go the right way several times, so I'm just assuming that you're not going to go to the fucking room we need to go to. Um, I, since I get a reroll, um, take Eustace's phone that he had, and he's just going to chuck it past you and try to get the attention of the creatures on you rather than me. Now, you, I think the rule is you can re-roll all of the die. Yep, I rolled yep. nothing good, so... Okay. And I... It, oh, no, my hope dies a five! Yes, I got a five. So I that is That is a success, yeah. <laughs> uh, so why don't you narrate for us what happens next? So I'm, I'm injured, I'm clearly a little messed up, and I see, like... I'm imagining I just see Allegra's character, like, looking a little bit confused, like, where am I going? Because that's kind of... Yes? Because <laughs> that's kind of how... Um, 
the character's been. So just like, mother, I knew it. And then just takes the phone and says, nothing <laughs> and then tosses the phone past and then i duck into a corner and the things that have been following me as well are now running past where i was and Amazing. i sneak into a uh, a maintenance shaft to go down down to the okay room. okay <laughs> um... fuck <laughs> sorry like no it's valid that's so, so cool <laughs> i'm also not sorry <laughs> no i know you're not <laughs> i've played games with you <laughs> so allegra you are being chased not only by a couple of them, but all of them now. Yeah. I need a roll from you, and this will be uh, a dire conflict. All right. How many do we have right now? Three? Three plus your hope uh, die, I think. Plus yeah, hope. two plus hope die. Oh, two plus, uh, two hope, plus die. hope die. Yeah, because I did roll a one on the last roll. Right. Thank I you. I you up real good. <laughs> I have two successes. Damn, I have one success, which is yes. not enough. Uh, so you are able to... Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. I have one success. I got, I confused what was my hope die, and the hope die was one with a six, and everything else was a five, so that's my bad. Okay. You may choose either I have narrative control... No. ...or you can steal the narrative <laughs> control, and we reduce Kill a candle. candle. Kill that candle. I have narrative control, motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> Another candle goes out. Three are left. Narrate for me how you get away from this, this, uh... Is backstabbing. Uh, after Eustace has backstabbed me, um, I think we're in the one part of the ship that Cyrus actually knows very well. <laughs> um, and they were turned around because it was dark, and then as soon as they realized where they were, they were going to be fine. Uh, but now that Eustace has uh, fully betrayed me, um, I'm, I've, f I've forgotten about him, and I'm running down through like this like convoluted series of doors um, and like through bunks and out of other bunks and then down a service hatch to try and get down to the bulkhead as fast I, as possible. I like Eli's thought of you just see a sticky note this is duck and he's like <laughs> <laughs> for sure like you know it's like this way that way <laughs> okay amazing so you are still alive although betrayed yep the two of you um we must uh, prepare for our third scene. These things are true. The world is dark. We're still alive, bitch. We're still alive. There are two truths left. What are the two truths we need to decide on? Um, the boat is starting to tip with the weight of the water. Oh, that's interesting. I like that idea. Hmm. Or the ship, I'm sorry. Yep, ship is beginning to tip over. So, uh, aircraft carriers work on nuclear engines. Uh, because we shot a hole through ours, um, it's no longer uh, shielding us from that radiation. So mm. radiation is spreading through the ship. Nice. Ah, I like that. Radiation is spreading. And you guys are feeling the effects I think, um, okay, that's that's great. Those are our two truths. Um, you guys are separated, no longer really working together. What's the move? Are we are we still kind of in sync with the same plan, though? I'm trying to get down to the nuke. Same. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be a, a race to see who can get there first. I'm going to ask one of you to make a, a roll, and then I'll ask the other... Let's see if maybe that uh, helps. See who gets it first. After you, darling. All right. My treacherous old man wins. <laughs> treacherous old ass. Nothing useful, and we lose a die. I Fuck. have one. I have one success. Okay. I think that with the slash on your back and starting to feel the effects of the radiation poisoning, um, you are really slowing down. And I think that um... <sighs> what would be the other effect? I think at this point, here's what happens. The creatures are able to catch up to you, and but they aren't attacking. And you're not exactly sure why. And then you start to realize they're kind of using you as bait. They're corralling you towards where they think you're heading which is the 
uh, comms room, and they are going to use you as bait in some way. I think that's something you start to realize. Uh, Allegra, roll for Cyrus. See if you can get to the comms room. All right, hold on. There's a cat leaping. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna burn my virtue dedicated uh, to reroll the one I just rolled. Okay. Uh, I don't. We don't lose die, but it's not a success, so I have one success. Okay, so with one success, explain how using dedicated your your virtue. How do you get to the comms room successfully? Um. The the uh. The love of the ship that Cyrus has had is, <laughs> yeah, I'm pulling it out, Eli. Uh, love it. It's is uh, is driving them forward because they would rather be the destruction of the ship than just let it happen on their own. Uh, that that situation of like being a bystander feels worse. Um, and like knowing that this is the only way to stop these other things from getting to land. Um, the radiation may be getting to them. They've been betrayed. Like everything might be happening, but like this is the one thing they can focus on and control. Okay. I kind of want to play my, you know, I had narrative control last where they're using Eustace as a decoy. <laughs> is there any way? Maybe. <sighs> I kind of want to say what happens is you're able to get to the room, but these creatures are forcing Eustace to fight you in some way or to keep you from getting the job done. Does that sound crazy? I, I feel like that probably works. I don't think so. I think I maybe like they've corralled him into the same room and they're like banking on my being pissed off that he betrayed me. Right. To to like having my focus be on fighting him more than doing what I need to do. Hmm. Maybe. I mean, I, th I think you're right on your part. Eustace, I think because you failed the last time, I might ask that you get the impression from these things that it's either stop your ally or you die now. Uh... I guess what sure. I'm saying is I, oh, I I feel like, Adrian, you might need to attempt to stop Cyrus. Or you can tell them to fuck off and not stop them. Yeah, I think I realize where they're leading me to, and, like, the door's closed on this side of the comms room, not the other side, which is the right. one that um, uh, Cyrus went through, and just uh, look at, like, loud enough that it's her through the door. I'm sorry. It looked like you were going the wrong way. I made a call. Um, I'm gonna buy you maybe a minute, <laughs> and then I'm gonna roll and uh, actually pump the shotgun this time. Okay. And uh, <laughs> fire it. Okay, go ahead. And I rolled a success. Hey. See. I've got some dice here too. I rolled a success as well. Are you going to burn the candle to successfully take narrative control? And if I martyr myself, I can pass the hope die, right? Oh, that's true. You can. So we will get that success. So we're down one. So we have two left. And just you hear like, boom, and then motherfucker. And then just the clang of a fire extinguisher hitting things. And uh, that's going to go on for like the next couple minutes while you're doing the work but like there is it's slowing down and i am clearly dead <laughs> you sis you oh, get the no. hope die though here have a die <laughs> you now have two Thanks. hope die allegra yeah another candle goes out and there are only two candles left meaning we are two scenes away from this coming to a close these things are true the world is dark I am alive. <laughs> That's right. So, um, we have to establish one more truth. Um, I think because we have two scenes, we need a reason to extend one more scene. Uh, meaning, 
the comms doesn't work. I was going to say the comms the, doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's see. Oh, let's I have, have you I've activated it manually. I think that's true enough. Yeah. Um, so do I have you roll a conflict roll to find that out or is it just, I guess it's just obvious. I think it's just the truth. Yeah. So then you discover that and you discover you have to do it manually. I need oh, shit. rolls <sighs> to make it down to the warhead. So I have four dice right now. Two you hope dice. Four dice. And two dice from where we're at. Yes. All right. I have two successes. Ooh, that's pretty good. Let's see. With my pool. Son of a bitch. Only fives and fours and threes. Okay, so... I Narrate to me what happens. Now, I'd like to add the fact that there has been a lot of flooding. So probably... You, you, go ahead and narrate what happens. Go ahead. Yeah, um... There's been a lot of flooding, uh, um, and Eustace, Eustace's cries are getting weaker. So I think uh, Cyrus tosses another magic card out as a as a as a pour one out for the dead homie. <laughs> yeah. um, Swords the plowshares. <laughs> I drop uh, Glade Heart Cavalry for <laughs> for Eustace. Uh, <laughs> And then I try and find just like a scuba tank, and because I assume we have scuba tanks on board, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I probably grab just like a scuba tank and throw it over my shoulder, uh, and grab like a mask and start making my way down. Okay. And then once the once the water's too deep, I start swimming through. I love that. Give me another conflict roll to see if you can finally get to the room where the warhead is now that you can safely traverse underwater no successes i have no. two successes oh. oh, God. you learn something new about these things not only can they glide but they can also swim Bitch tits. they are now following you um you still have two die though you haven't uh, hit any ones or anything yet mm -hmm. okay Su surprisingly no okay <laughs> Either you want to try to get away from them, or you want to try to fight them or distract them. What do you want to try to do? Um, I take the last two glow sticks and I crack them, um, and I just put them on my back in the scuba tank so that the things don't want to be near me. Hmm. Okay, I like that. Uh, go ahead. This is pretty dire, though, so... That's valid. I'll say that uh, you won't necessarily die, but something bad might happen. So go ahead and make your roll. See if you can succeed. Two. Two successes. I yes. have two successes as well. Burn the candle! Burning the candles at all ends. We are going to go to our final candle, which means our final scene. These things are true. The world is dark. I'm still alive. And that is the only truth left. Now... <laughs> In this final scene, you have only one die plus your hope die. If you roll a one, that means you die. I have eight or nine die, excuse me. So with your two hope die, we'll say uh -huh. that you, with your success, you made it to the warhead. Um, what are you going to do? Um, These things are still not far behind. I take my little mop handle that's left. I jam it in a place you're not supposed to jam mop handles and nuclear weapons. And then I take the scuba tank and I hit it with a scuba tank to try and do a science thing. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, are you are you hitting the warhead? I've I've jammed the stick oh, yeah, into yeah. like a seam of the warhead, so I'm hitting the stick so it ruptures. Gotcha. So maybe. you're basically just trying to buy yourself a little bit of time. Go ahead I'm and trying roll. To, I'm trying to boom the bomb with, but I don't, I don't really know how you explode in an atomic bomb. <laughs> well, I think, I think we established that you basically have to like hit a couple buttons on the warhead. So what you could be doing right now is like maybe keeping them from getting into the room with you. Oh, then, then, okay. I understand now there are buttons on the bomb. So yes. I think then I'm going to just, uh, jam the little stick in the, in the door 
so that if they try to they try to pull it open, it catches. Okay, got it. Go ahead and make the roll. <sighs> Is that the one? It's a one. It's a one. Do you have your brink still? I do have, have my brink. brink. Yeah. It was, I've seen you push another person in front of you. Or no, my brink was, do I read the one that Eli had for me? Or it's do the I... one that you were given. You okay, were given a brink. Okay, then the one I was given was, um, I've seen you sabotage equipment. Hey, sounds like you're kind of sabotaging equipment now. And I'm absolutely sabotaging equipment right now. So you may re-roll <laughs> all of your die. <sighs> all right. I helped. <laughs> you did absolutely help. Do not fuck me. Let's see Please. if Allegra's dice will play nice. <laughs> it's worse. It's a one? It's, it's two worse. ones. <laughs> okay. Uh, fuck. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Uh, I mean, as we established, uh, a one means the end. So... Yep. Within feet of the warhead. Oh, this is so sad. The door bursts open and and, and maybe the, the, the tank itself explodes and kind of blows you back. And your last moments alive, you see the creatures rushing in and you see you're so close to the warhead. But you lose consciousness and the candle blows out. <sighs> These things are true. The world is dark, and unfortunately, you were unable to complete the mission. God damn it. I'm going to ask that Eli please play back your audio that was recorded. One second. Bring it close to the mic so that we can hear. All I know is that there sorry, is sorry, me. All I know is that there is me, Yusuf, and Cyrus. As far as I know, unless other crew members are holed out, most of them are dead. If you get this recording, know that we tried whatever we could to stop this. Adrian, would you please play your audio? Oh, that was that silence. One second. <laughs> Give me some volume. Here we go. Mother. Calm. Eustace. December 12th. Whatever year this fucking is. Um, couple things. Jeremy, I'm sorry. You know what for. Um, it couldn't be helped. I had to uh, make sure that the research things were still fine. You know how it is. <sighs> um, look, I, I'm very tired. <laughs> I should have clearly retired a couple of years ago, but um, I guess I can't retire now. That pension isn't going to do me much good <laughs> with what I've seen. Um, well, I will keep uh, poor logs for posterity's sake in case anyone else comes upon these. Um, if I'm able to identify any traits about these creatures, I will um, make sure that you have it. Um, but until then, signing off. These are somehow sadder. <laughs> well, uh, that sucked. This whole situation sucks, actually. This is really shitty. But we're living through historic times. We're continuing to live through historic times. I'd love to live in a time where things were just chill. That'd be super cool. Um, but hey... That's life, or something like that. Also, Archie, I slept with your girlfriend. Sorry. <laughs> I like to think that that plays in our in our narration as your body floats in the water, 
<laughs> and that is the end of our 10 candles one shot. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you. It serves Thank you. So Thank fun. you for having us. Yeah. That was, that was a lot of fun. I, I think we enjoyed it enough. We'll probably try it again in the new year. Yeah. Um, guys, anything we need to announce or say? Last episode of Vampire the Masquerade, Vegas by night of 2022, is next weekend. Cannot wait. Prepare for maybe mermaids? Who knows? Maybe we'll, we'll be in the water again, which is interesting. Yeah. Oh, water episode. I'm telling you, water world. Water uh, world. Adrian, is there anything you want to plug? Uh, not next this week, but next week, uh, Into the Fog again. Um, <gasps> On the Altered Echoes Archive uh, yeah. channel, right? And we're doing some uh, holiday one-shots. We're trying to get GM, so if people are interested, let us know. Um, but otherwise, uh, that's about it. Thank you for having me. Well, thanks for being <laughs> here. We're so happy you were able to join us. It was yeah. an absolute blast. Everyone else, uh, thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves, and we will see you next time. Right. Bye. Bye.